that being said, I will go ahead and turn it over to Raven and then move down the line in order at the bottom of the screen. All right, well, Raven's playing the character Fig Jam this evening. Uh, Fig Jam is a dog handler, along with his mate, Dammit. <laughs> um, not exactly sure what sort of mischief the two of them are going to get up to, but we'll see. Next would be Zypher. Hey, the name's Sackbit. You want someone to wheel and deal for you, get you stuff, and out here in the bad zones, I'm the guy with the four arms. The right, right doesn't know what the left's doing, the left doesn't know what the right's doing, and sometimes the other two arms are just pulling me off. <laughs> then we'll be the closed. Oh mate, my name's Clanker. Uh, I'm the resident jury rigger, one of them anyway, for this bloody arc. Um, you find me, you get me a pile of scrap, you want something, man, I'll make it. I might not make what you want, but I'll make something of it. Uh, other than that, I keep to myself and just drink the amber fluid and piss all over the place, so that's me. <laughs> Alright, and finally there was Tetnak himself. Uh, I'm Musk. Killer. Punch things, stab things, headbutt things. You never see my face. Pretty handsome under here. Don't want the Sheilas to get all hot and bothered. So if you need something dead, you come to me. Alright. And last, we'll give a shout out and a special thanks from me. You'll notice why a little bit later, but Matihi is here as well. Hi, Matihi. Howdy. She is there. All right. Now we're going to do a brief rundown of the game setting. Um, for those of you that have actually cracked the book, you might understand what's going on. For those of you who are not, I'd like to set a couple, established a couple of ground things out of the way. Um, Mutant Year Zero is basically y'all are playing mutants. Uh, you're not exactly human, but at your core essence, you are a human being. You know, it's just that you're different. You're freakish, and you, some of you possess physical abilities, some of you possess psych psych psychic abilities and stuff like that. But you're definitely not a normal human being. You are a mutant. And also, for whatever reason, that nobody that you've encountered is over the age of roughly about 30 years old. Um, you have grown up and existed in a place that they refer to as the Ark. That is your home base. That's where your society, your whole clan is pretty much get, ex gathered together, existed, and grown up. In. Um, in this case, since we're, the game itself is going to be set in the ruins of Melbourne, Australia, nicknamed Hellborn, Australia, ha -ha. Uh, you're going to be living in a place that used to be the Docklands football stadium, but as far as all y'all know, y'all refer to it as Halo. That's home. Why Halo? Because it's, it's a round circle. <laughs> um, if you wish to look through your documents section, you will see a folder that says the awk. Open it up, I have an abbreviated layout. I actually have a, a character sheet, a stat sheet that has the arc stats on it. Um, we will be adding stuff to that as you go along because you can do projects and stuff to try and build and develop and expand the arc. But it gives you a generic rundown of how it works. Uh, you have development levels, development levels on the top right hand side of the sheet. Uh, those, the higher the number, the better, of course, but they represent your relative, um, levels of existence. Uh, it's like your food supply rating right now is currently low, your culture rating is low, your technology is low, but you have a decent warfare, which means since you're in a, the ruins of a stadium, it's the walls itself present, provide a decent enough defense. Um, remember too, this is, this is a wasteland, nothing is shiny or new uh if it is it's a miracle and it's probably going to be jaw dropping pretty much everything is a regurgitated recycled 
type environment where you take pieces of that and pieces of this and combine it together to make your shiny boomstick, et cetera, et cetera. Um, your people, everybody here was raised by one individual who refer to as the elder. He is obviously not a mutant, but in fact, an old, feebly infirmed human being. You know, he's what y'all would call one of the ancients, so to speak, from the before time or whatever you want to think about it. Uh, he's pretty much raised you your entire existence. Now he's gotten to the point where he can barely get out and about and do anything. And rumors have it that maybe even his life, something's going on there. He might be at his last leg. But uh, during this time of him being sick, also too, since it's Australia, you might hear some of them refer to him as the clever man, basically derived from the Aborigine belief of the clever man. He was a tribal shaman that guarded the barriers between the spirit world and the real world. Uh, but since the elder became sick, things have gotten bad in the Ark. Uh, people are starting to digress to a this is mine type attitude, you know, since source supplies are running out. People are starting to become at odds and basically people that were content enough initially to be subservient to the elder are starting to rise in power, basically forming up into gangs and cliques. You notice on the uh, arc sheet, the, the populace itself is 236 individuals. Um, out of that, there are three major bosses. Um, once again, if you look at the sheets, you can see how each gang's broke down into. There's, it's like they control groups of minions underneath them, and those are like the three top bosses. There are other bosses that do exist, but they're not considered major bosses. It's basically just, even though it's one collective society, it, it's 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 rather tribal and cliquish, so to speak. But up until now, you know, pretty much everyone gets along for the greater good and simple survival, pretty much. Uh, it's also, as the game begins, it's pretty much at that point where something has to be done to ensure the safety of your people and your general existence. And that's what we'll be starting off as. I want to take the time now to basically, there are some sections on your character sheets, if you look at them, that are, aren't filled out completely. Uh, some of the easy stuff is like a simple description part if you wanted to. You could do that in your bio or whatever. But there are some key components that I want to address. Those being relationships. Uh, if you scroll down to the bottom of the character sheet, it'll say relationships and then the PCs. Uh, you basically want to just jot down a sentence or two of what you think about each individual in the group. And then choose one of your fellow players to be your buddy. Uh, the buddy, basically, if you do something in the game to like sacrifice yourself to protect your true friend, you get a bonus experience point. Um, at the end of the session, if you want to reevaluate your relationship, like let's say you just decide, even though you're my buddy, not nah, screw you, is you know I'm not going to help you out or whatever. You can reevaluate and choose another friend or whatever you wish to. Um, there is also, I don't know, think any of you really did any pregame shopping. Uh, we determined your bullets, your grub, and your water, but I don't think any of you really looked at the gear list. There is a gear list under basic rules stuff. But if you wish to buy some gear, we would probably want to do that. Uh, gear is bought with character creation with the bullets. Bullets are both ammunition and also a, a barter item. You can also trade and scrap and stuff like that too, uh, which is what you discover as you go along. But pretty much for the most part, since most people have makeshift guns, guns keep you alive, bullets are an important trade item. But if you wish to look at the sheet, a lot of stuff can get pricey, but there are some things that none of y'all really have. There's torches, a simple tender box would be nice. Uh, if y'all wish to get spending. How many, how many bullets do we have? Is it uh, on the sheet? 
Yeah, it's on your character sheet. There's a section uh, in the middle called supplies. Oh, I see. Oh, actually, Got it. yeah. And that is roughly, if you have six bullets, it's six shots. If you have five grub, that's five days worth of food. If you have seven water, that's seven days worth of water. And at the end of each day, you need one grub, one water to consume. Uh, if you're trying to recuperate from being damaged, you can also consume food and water to help help you heal. But um, as it is now, if y'all wish to make any purchases on gear, that would be cool. Just let me know what they are. Because if the cost on them is like a random value, you just have to figure out what pretty much what what the price was that they were asking whenever you bought it. Can't think of anything that I would spend my precious bullets on. All right. Nobody's gonna buy just a basic tender box. Yeah, well, I, if I will. <laughs> All right. That will cost one bullet, and you can add it to your gear list. Its weight is light or a half. Might not have any torches, but you'll have something to light shit with. <laughs> we can find some sticks. Um, also, let me go ahead and get it out of the way now. Ghost, you being a gearhead, you managed to start off with an artifact, but you do not know how to use it. You have to actually roll before the game begins to figure out if whether or not this strange device that you have is within your understanding. Uh, that and that that in itself will give us a chance to show off the spiffy API and also show you how you do your skill. Uh, I have incorporated in the sheets, I've hacked them and basically linked the API to the skills. Uh, so on your character sheet, you would, it was a comprehend check. Ooh. Okay, so for this, as far as what I'm clicking on for the, is it base dice, mod dice? Uh, no, you, on your sheet, there should be a comprehend skill. Mm -hmm. Oh, I see. I see. I think the only thing that it pops up is if, if you have a gear bonus, which you don't have any gear bonus. Looking at that, you'll see that it pops up his name, the skill, and then it'll show the green dice roll, yellow dice roll, and then if there were gear dice bonus, there would be black dice. But if you notice that he got one radiation symbol, which is a success, that's why at least on the top. For his skill bonus, he got one success and two mutations. Um, basically, if you fail a roll, you don't get any of the radiation symbols. You can do what's called a push. You take damage doing it because you overexert yourself. But um, it gives you another chance to re-roll. But if you push a roll, those, those bars underneath the green radiation symbol come into play. Um, the, the hazard sign means that a mutation, something happens inside of your body. It, you can actually gain extra mutations, etc., etc., as it pops up. Um, for items, whenever you get the explosion symbol, that basically means they've been degraded in the process of what you're doing. But as it stands now, he made a roll, he got one success. Um, one success is enough to basically state or basically determine that you've managed to successfully understood that this generator pre presents power if, with the proper ingredients which i do believe you already have on your sheet which is booze mm -hmm. um and you 
you contribute one die six to the if well that's only if you put it in the dawn vault i'm assuming you're keeping it for yourself right now for right now yeah yeah the arc is that yeah the arc has a, a spot that's uh, dedicated to what they call a dawn vault whenever you find artifacts you have the choice of keeping them to yourself or you can actually contribute them to the arc and basically you you better the arcs uh different levels there they could better the cultural level they could better the defensive level food supply stuff like that fuck you pay me so basically somewhere secluded in your den you have a generator that you know how to use in an old betsy a secret um that being said etl2 and your description stuff you're each y'all have your own little hidey hole if y'all want to come up with it, like a den. That's your little private space where you exist in the Ark. But I recommend reading through the documents that are printed out at your own leisure before you just decide that because you get a feel for the whole place. Um, rolled for the generator. And typically a session, the way they do it, um, the original game itself had a bunch of, had several decks of cards and dice. Now, normally whenever the session works, what you would do is you would go out, you would explore a sector on the zone map. Uh, the stalker would roll to try and scout his way through if he detects anything. And then you would like generate through the, the cards and the dice rolls, you would determine like, okay, well, what's the threat rating? Okay, well, if did they encounter anything? Okay, let's determine what type of encounter it was and stuff like that. That I'm gonna be doing all in the shadows, but you know, because to me, I do make, I have the macros worked out. If you notice the icons up in the top hand right, you'll see armor, mutation, scrap, artifacts, critical, and threat. I have those for my own personal reference. If I do it behind the screen, I can just click them and I have a lot of them set to whisper. Some of them you can access, like the critical, critical hit table. Uh, Zypher, if you would, left click the critical hit table. Does it bring up uh, macros for you? I'm assuming Pfeiffer didn't hear me. No, sorry. Uh, yes, it says private and public. Okay, go ahead and click public. And then it bring up a target. You can target whoever you want. Any icon on there. Boom! That's critical injuries. Uh, Chet, if you want, go ahead and give me a armor macro. Should say armor or cover. Yep. Yeah. Um, if you have armor, it'll have a rating like if, like three points. Go ahead and type in three if you want for armor. Cover works the same way. It's just you get bonuses. It's basically for each success you roll on that, you reduce the damage by one point. Mm -hmm. um, and Rob, let's get you to do a mutation roll for me. Uh, a lot of you. Each of you has a mutation if you read your character sheet. And it shows what you can do when you activate it. Activating mutation never, f I want to say never fails, but I think there's a misfire table that um, it there's might be one result on a misfire that keeps it from activating. But uh, it always activates. But whenever you activate, you have a chance of it going wild and intensifying itself, or even giving you another mutation. So whenever you wish to declare one, you roll on the activate, activate table. If you get a hazard symbol on that roll, it's considered a misfire, and that's when you roll on the misfire table. But if you want to give me an, an activate roll to test that out. Okay, activate mutation. Yeah, would you just do the default one mutation point? Yeah, I just did the default. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, each of y'all start off with one mutation point. The maximum you can have is 10. Um, your abilities sometimes say based off of how many mutation points you put into it. Uh, at the start of each session, you gain a mutation point. And it'll stack. Like, if you didn't use any of this session, next session you would have two. And I do believe there's ways to rest and stuff that'll help you accumulate more of them, too. And if I remember right, I think one of the activation results might actually... Uh, boost them up but imitations are handy devices especially once they start going crazy and like I said based on gameplay you might start sprouting new mutations uh, and the rest
rest is pretty much for me. But like I said, I'm going to do a healthy mix of what the normal session generation stuff is, as well as um, the whole, pretty much the developed storyline. And that being said, I want to take some time to just give you some immersion experience. If you're familiar with my old Westford game, I kind of did it. It was just like stuff to listen to. Um, I'll have some visuals to go along with it. I won't lie, the first one's a little bit lengthy, but then the last three are well worth it. And that's where the special thank you to Mati comes in. But uh, we'll go ahead and do that. Being said, I will kill the music, which I'm glad, I think Tet will be grateful for. And then I will start things over. Um, make sure I have everything set up properly. All right, you will have a you will have a document pop up in front of you as well as an audio. The document is for your visual reference in the event that you can't understand anything being said. That way you can at least read it and it helps clarify the words. Um and the screen might change a couple times. It'll change once you it should change three times in the process. If you are ready, just basically Turn up the volume for a decent recording and hopefully enjoy the next several minutes. Unless you'll have any pertinent questions or immediate needs to go to the bathroom or a drink or anything. No. All right. And here we go. Left is turning violent. 
without help. You own your own now. It's time to venture out. To explore the zone. To search for artifacts and knowledge. Build. Grow the land. Seek out others. Create a new civilization on the ruins of the old one. Seek your origin. No children are born to the people. If you do nothing, you will perish. Maybe, one day, you will find the Eden of Legend, the ancient's haven from the encroaching hellscape. That's where salvation and truth await, the stories say. Maybe it's all fairy tales. It doesn't matter. You have no choice. This is the beginning. This is year zero. And am I 
There we go. I forgot to mute it on, should have muted it on Discord. But we are back. Hopefully, y'all didn't fall asleep. That was good. That was good. <laughs> All I'm right. jacked in. All right. I want to give another special thank you for Matihi for assisting me. Thank you, Matihi. You're welcome. Thanks, right, Sheila. All right. My main goal, like I said, when I said session zero, ground zero is the immersion factor. And everything seems to be covered. Um, Ted, I noticed you made comments about make, getting items and stuff like that. Did you make the notations? And I, did. The I okay, did. I did. Cool, mm -hmm. cool beans. It all looks fine. All right. That being said, we will go ahead. And normally in a session, what I would do is you would, there was a, a, a deck of cards called Arc Threats. I would choose one and like lay that out on the table in front of us. And then we would all like go from the game from that. I did that in the shadows because it's a speed factor. And I basically have the, the startup for the, the way the game begins. So, and if you were curious, I drew the last drop, which basically means water's running out. That's the threat to the arc. But y'all don't know that. But we will go ahead and start things off. Hopefully you'll have a little better feel what's going on. A little more personal motivation for how things go. All of y'all are part of a gang, by the way, your Mako's gang, if you haven't looked at the sheet. Uh, he's one of the primary bosses. He's more of a worker-laborer type. Um, he's the, probably the smallest out of the three, but his, his, he's kind of laid back in his methodologies. He's basically saying, you give me an honest day's work, I'll give you an honest day's grub. Uh, the other boss is Yaka, or General Yaka. He is more of a militant commander. He is tasked with protecting the Ark, but he's always complained about not having good enough armor, not having enough guns, and he's trying to make the best of what make the best out of what what gear he has. And he's very militant, but he he seems to be like that that lawful good fighter stuck in a chaotic neutral situation. He's, he wants to do good, but he has to try and adapt at the same time. Then there is Lord Bandy. Lord Bandy is the, the was the younger brother of the ruler of his gang, but he actually killed his brother and usurped the power. And nobody really seemed to care because. And it, it, at the time, he was making all these promises and stuff, and he's provided a better life for his people, so they're all happy. He's the largest, and also he has a trait called Gunslinger, so all of his troops have have guns, have scrap pistols. That's pretty. He also is in charge of the Ark's water supply, the the territory where it's at. Basically, Link of him is the type that comes out, distributes the water, and stuff like that. Um, that being said, we'll just go ahead straight into it. I'll give you a situation like any good game master would. It's a little more reading, I'm sorry, but <laughs> it's it's all about those first steps. I'm trying to make them as good for you as possible. Go ahead and move over. Y'all get the pop up. Yep. Yep. All right. Oops. One. <laughs> Ignore that one for now. This one. sounds of a nearby trash can fire and someone coughing in the distance ultimately stir you from your rather deepened slumber. 
The air about you is oppressive and thick, intermingled with the overwhelming sensation of a perverse harmony of heat and chill. Despite the fact that the sun has not yet begun to rise, you can somehow tell the hour for it to do so is quickly drawing near. Wiping away the crusty remnants of the previous night's sleep from your eyes, you slowly begin to rise to your feet and prepare yourself for the Ark's morning assembly. The first two weeks of spring have been icy and brutal to those of you living here in the Ark. You quickly spot a young mutant outside your den as you make your way to join the others. The idiotic youth is hunkered down on the ground on all four of his limbs and laps away at a small puddle of what is most assuredly tainted rot water, most greedily. You can hardly blame the lad, though. There's been no rainfall as of yet this spring, and your fellow residents in the Ark have already gone through the previous season's reserves most dubiously. Lord Bandy, <laughs> the name almost makes you spit upon the ground as it fills your minds had proclaimed a proclamation that all water rations were to be halved nearly over a month ago. But now it seems that the proclamation has halved itself yet again. Though the pompous pain in the ass of a boss has repeatedly assured the Ark that there is nothing to fear and that it is merely a case of his most prized gearhead needing time to recover from an illness-related injury which he sustained during the winter. One cannot help but feel that there is something more going on here than meets the eyes. There are also numerous rumors going around of the Ark that the Elder had gotten sick during the winter as well, and the old man has been fighting for his life ever since. Given the bustle of daily activity into and out of his guarded abode by Sister Valora and her fellow chronicles, chroniclers, you could easily surmise that the rumors are indeed true. Still, though, it does nothing to quell the pangs of thirst and now growing hunger that ravaged the Ark like a plague. If you wish to roleplay yourselves coming out of your den, maybe you can create where you come from in the Ark itself as you basically group up to head to the assembly. By all means, do so. Fig Jam and Dammit come rolling out of a big air duct stretch and make their way to the assembly. Sakrin is... <clears throat> he's uh, found a nice little corner um, underneath the benches uh, high up in the uh, nosebleed sections. Kind of stretches. <sighs> he pulls out his glasses that he found somewhere long ago all he knows is when he puts them on he sees, sees the world with much greater clarity than he used to before and, oh, time to make some bullets mm -hmm. that thought is invigorating and he starts uh, making his way down some bullets time to make some piss and Mask walks out from a nearby uh, row of seats and leans against the wall, putting his sack-covered head against the cold, mo gross, worn steel and begins to relieve himself on the wall. Mask, my friend. Mm. One day I need to find a booze bottle that's empty. Maybe sell your piss for colored water. <laughs> mm, that would fetch us some bullets. You know how to sell anything. I can sell pretty much anything. Yes, indeed. People are desperate. There's news that there might not be much water remaining. Even piss. Fool. No one wants to drink my piss. Just you watch. Pretty soon, they'll be ready to drink more than your piss. The masthead just kind of looks at Saccharin and then 
turns around, shakes his cock off, stuffs it back in his pants, and looks at his hands and wipes them on his threadbare um, shirt and begins to fall a saccharine down the stairs. You fucking cunts are loud enough to wake the dead. Uh, Clanker will come out of a little shanty that's cobbled together scrap and garbage that he calls home, hiding inside of it. Comes out with a little bit of booze and a really shitty, like, probably broken cup he's got, and he's kind of tossed it in a little junk pile next to his hut. Good gods. Fuck has woke everybody up. Just looks around at a bunch of people walking towards the assembly. Well, when you got a stream like a river, and he points to the puddle of piss at his feet. No wonder we got a fucking water shortage. You're pissing it out. Would you like to drink it? Oh, it's been perverted. No, mate, I'd rather have my amber fluid. He points at the mostly gone booze in his cup. Well, that's got to go from somewhere. Too right, mate. Too right. That'd be about the time that he throws in the pile. Well, that's the same way today, yeah? Mass kind of shrugs. Well, Clanker, before you throw that bottle away, just keep it. I'm telling you, the day is gonna come when people are gonna come for mask spills. They're gonna make a lot of bullets. Hmm. Mate, I already make bullets. I'm pointing over my scrap. Give me 15 minutes, I'll make something to make you bullets. I want bullets that work, Clanker, not... Not what you will call that in your hand right now. Well, you lost, mate. He's trying to show throws his, rest of his clothes on and starts walking. Yeah, as you'll descend the steps of the, the bleachers. Um, Saccharin, you kind of hear a scuffling behind you and then a slurping sound. You spin about real quick and you actually notice a really beraggled female mutant has run up to the puddle of piss and is actually doing her best to try and drink it. Oi! You there! That's she's getting that for free! Yes! I told you people are gonna come for your piss. Oi! She's, she like immediately friggin' looks terrified and just hauls ass off away. Never doubt the word of Sacrin. Keep that piss inside you, mask. Keep it inside. He scratches his head through the burlap sack. As you descend down, you spot Fig Jam and Dammit down below. And as you go to raise your hand towards him, you see Dammit's head cock as a rat goes running by. And she immediately looks back to you, Fig Jam, like. Is it okay to chase? He gives her the nod. Okay, she immediately wolfs and starts tearing off after the rat. And chases the rat along the side of the bottom, you know, like the, the raised part of the, the pitch. And she chases it along and it looks like she's just about to catch it. And you see this friggin' combat boot stomp down on its head and goes <laughs> and it's boss. He just like grinds his heel into the head of the rat, then he just like like waves his hand at the dog and he's like, back off, bitch. Reaches down, pulls the rat up without even hesitating, just bites its head off and starts chomping away on it. He's like Jim scowls a bit at that. He just keeps munching, then he spins around and spots the your trio coming down the stairs and he's like, ah, it's about time you cunt showed up. Come on, let's go. Mako's gonna be pissed. Well, fuck you too, boss. <laughs> he just, he just grins with bloody rat meat in between his teeth dribbling down his chin. Uh, as Sakrin gets closer to Dammit, he's gonna give Dammit his 
morning ritual with all four arms he's going to scratch damage two years and his hind legs all at the same time <laughs> oh it's a she isn't it is in a bit that's a she okay her, yeah, thank her her hind legs. Uh, actually i originally plotted him as a male oh okay it's a guy then there you go there you go Oh, the dog just totally eats it up. Just starts totally slobbering your face and just <laughs> immediately flops over on her back or his back and exposes his genitalia to you. His cock's all <laughs> waggling back and forth, and he's his tongue hanging out on the back of his jaw. That's the forehand workout. Mm. All dog. I don't know what you're getting all worked out of place for. About to sell some piss up there. What's that? Oh, I'm talking to this one. And he points to Boz. Boz just kind of looks at you as he's munching him. He's almost done with the rat. He's like, what was that? He just, like, waves his hand towards him like he's dismissing him. Nah. It would take too long to explain to you, Boz. Too long and we ain't got the time. Now lead us out. He quickly haunches the last of the hind end of the rat and slurps the tail down like a noodle. He's like, yeah, you're right, we're already gonna be late. Shuffles about his rifle over his shoulder and starts trudging towards the assembly stage. Um, if you read the layout of the, um, the stadium itself, it's basically, uh... East side is the vaults and the chronicles. West side is General Yaka. Up in the corporate boxes of the south side is um, Bandy. And a corporate box on the north side is the elders' chamber. And down on the pitch below the elders' side, the, the northern side, that's where they have like a rickety stage. And that's where they hold assemblies. And now it's where General Yaka likes to run, he likes to run military drills with his troops basically trying to make his presence known to everyone there. And, uh, I was gonna say something else. The general, you got the stage, the assembly stage, and also right on the outside of the western side of the stadium, there's a little shanty built against the side that's known as the Ricketts. And that's where like this crazy cult leader has a small following, a, a group of following. And he's generally not permitted inside the city unless it's to trade, which is the, the center of the pitch itself is set up as like minimal housing as well as the trading grounds where people swap. But give you an idea of the layout. We'll go ahead and move things along. Go ahead and reshow that. Go. You ultimately find yourself approaching the center pitch of Halo. Descending the steps, you can already see quite a lot of people already gathering to attend its morning assembly. Quickly do your best to struggle through the crowd and find yourself a spot next to the rest of your companions. The morning sun still hasn't risen and a stifled chill rushes over your skin like a welcome embrace as the stench of sweat and the warmth of body heat begins to thaw the blood. The gathered mob rambles, nothing new however, there's still a chronic shortage of grub and water in the ark and anyone that carrying more than a few rations most definitely attracts attention and puts their lives in peril you still can't believe it the most precious resource of all in the ark is something that everyone surely takes for granted clean water has it really been that long ago that the ark's water supply was first rationed surely lord bandy is lying most likely either afraid to admit that the ark supply has started to dry up or for whatever nefarious reasons he might have he might have opted to hoard it all for himself either reason the people were starting to get scared and all are extremely edgy forcing your way further among the crowd you duly note your boss mako's giant blue form lurking about the masses and make your way towards him the amphibious mutant appears to be talking to lincoln the gearhead and from the expression upon his face is most agitated by something. As for Lincoln, well, it's hard to determine the expression upon his face for nearly the entire right side of it is bloodied, beaten, and most assuredly bruising. The 
cantankerous handyman spots your approach and immediately shuffles off into the crowd. Despering cover his injured features as he does so. Mako, however, simply thicks his shark-like teeth and slightly shrugs as Lincoln departs. He then turns his frame to meet your own, nods backwards in acknowledgement, and gravels forth with a resounding... Good morning, ladies. What brings you fawn sealers to this side of the pitch so early in the morning? He just smiles at all y'all. Well, boss, gotta get some work. Morning, Mako. It's like, ta, morning. Did you know I can sell my piss? <laughs> just kind of looks and kind of half heartedly chuckles. He's like, yeah. Just, uh, given these days, I wouldn't be surprised. Are they planning on using it as lamp oil? Yeah. <laughs> it's not burning that bad. Fucking bullshit. He scratches his head through the mask again. Just look at it like, like you lot ready for the morning's assembly? Looking forward to it, boss. Uh, it's it's going to be the same things we always talk about. Nothing gets done. Ain't that the truth? Kind of has a distant look in his face and scratches the top of his ridged head with talon fingers. It's, it's like, oh, but who knows? Maybe we might have some bright days ahead of us. And he kind of lets out a grin and then realizes that he's grinning and stops. Only if mass piss sets the whole fucking arc on fire. It'd be real bright. Boz is immediately like, There's nothing wrong with a good barbecue. <laughs> Pranker just looks at Boz and shakes his head at how this Boz, goes. if you were such a good stalker, mm, yeah. He just like does the hand wave and he's like, yeah, yeah, I've had it before. I've had it. Starts picking rat out of his teeth. Well, what do you wager, boys? What's gonna be the news today? Water fucking running out of water. water. Same story as the last time. No fucking water for anybody. Or half rations, or maybe quarter rations now. Gonna be reverting to booze soon enough. Mm. Mass kind of uses his elbow and nudges Sacred. Huh. We might be able to run a business now for a show. Yes, Mask. But, you see, you would still need water to make your piss water. Oh, he seems like he didn't really consider that and rubs his chin. <laughs> you could probably drink other people's piss if you're really desperate to make some piss. Mm. No, no, no. That's how the rot sets in. No, you gotta be smart. So we give them my piss but I have to drink other people's piss. Where did they get their piss? And <laughs> Cranker just smiles and shakes his head. And... Mako places a hand on your shoulder mask and he says, that's quite the conundrum you've got there, isn't it? <laughs> he looks to Sacrum as if he has the answers. If we could solve that mask, I think we would be bosses as well. Hmm. But for now, we shall just wait and watch. Watch with our open eyes. The red eye sees something and the blue eye sees something. And then together we'll find new ways of making bullets. Just to watch. I'm not going to say anything further. I'll move it along if not. Well, just to be clear, I'm not drinking this piss. 
That's because you don't have any money. <laughs> kind of hear Boz mutter under his breath. He goes, I've got no ash. Good. Sure you have Boz. Holy dooly. But, um, you eventually, seeing how that's what it's going to be, said further, uh, you gather together and you notice more people start coming in and the assembly seems to be taking place. Oh man, I forgot, totally forgot to do that. So then Sakrin looks to, uh, oh shit, I forget the name, Mac Mako, and he says, uh, so what is all that, all that about, boss? You bruise up, Lincoln? I'm going off, run! He's like, ah, he's kind of dismissive. He's like, nothing to worry about. You and say so, the, boss. Unless you press the matter further or try to manipulate him, that's what's going to happen. Uh, ch -ch -ch -ch, why not? Why not try that? Uh, one minute. Who's... Wait, what? One minute. Uh, is he the gearhead you mentioned with respect to Bandy? It is what? What was it? You said uh, ba one of Bandy's gearheads was sick. The one who helps him with the no, war. No, no, he's not. Lincoln um, is loosely tied to Mako. He's pretty much an independent, grumpy old fart who, like, fixes anything for an exorbitant cost he's also been known to dabble on the side with um making profit off of collecting rainwater and selling it hmm. so saxon's like boss why do you keep that little shithead around you know we got clanker clanker's way better than whatever lincoln clutches up that shit breaks half the time anyway Clank, Clank is picking his nose. Yeah, Mako immediately looks at you and he goes, But what if more than one thing breaks at a time? Well, when Clanker makes something, it doesn't break. Ever wonder if Lincoln is making it such that it breaks? Hmm, I wonder. I mean, you know me, boss. Bullets, bullets make me go crazy. I would do something like that. That's why I don't build shit. I just sell it. It's kind of like, you don't worry about Lakin. He's a friend. That's mm. all we've got these days, a friends. That's what worries me, boss. When the shit goes down, it's the friends that are knocking on the back door and shoving things in you that you don't want to be shoved in. Mask. If you could see his expression, it would be quite perplexed. He's like looking at you. Oh! 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 He just kind of looks back to Mako. Yes, mask. That's what they used to call it, I think. Double and thunder. I think. I don't know. It's one thing, and but it means the other thing, and then it means something else if you think about it the other way. Mm. Anyway. Uh. Okay. And then if Sakrin sees that Mako is still tight lip, he's just gonna drop the matter. Just gonna drop the matter? Okay. Alright. Ultimately, is y'all. Continue to converse, Mako kind of like looks at the crowd gathering around him and you go, It's time. Take your place. And he goes to approach and, and random time intervals, you notice uh, General Yaka and his men approach. take their position around the stage 
and ultimately you can hear the trudging of boots upon the earth as you, in very Gestapo-esque style, you see a small contingent of guards come out, each one of them sporting scrap rifles and sidearms. And... Young Lord Randy, or Young Lord Bandy, comes out accompanied always by his trusty servant, Damo. Don't mean to riddle y'all with pop-ups, but just giving you a feel. For who's coming to the field, Uh, Yaka's a large, muscular man. His hair is drawn back into tight cornrows, and he has a vicious scar that runs down the side of his eyebrow across the face and continues down to his chest. Uh, Lord Bandy and his, uh, his entourage are all meticulously groomed as best as they can be. Uh, carries himself with a air of exuberance and self-appointed royalty. Adamo, he's a scary individual. He's pretty much Bandy's iron hand of an, of an enforcer. He's not one to say many words, and when he, uh, when he does, they're usually concise to the point and backed up with a friggin' show of force almost immediately as if he's waiting to, to dispense it. But, um, like I said, the assembly is ultimately called, and it starts off with people letting out, you know, like, you know, pretty much your generic, all right, everyone gather around, here's the deal, you know, food's grown short, water's grown short, and everyone looks to Bandy, and he knows people in the crowd start shouting out about, you know, we need water, we need water, and he immediately tries to trumpet with, it's all right, it's all right, don't worry about it, people. He says, he says, my gearhead is almost fully recovered. We'll have water in no time. I assure you. Um, if you Ma wish to, Mass wish looks to. at Sacred and says, How does a gearhead make water? I thought it came from the sky. No mask. Sometimes there's water underneath as well. You just have to find it. I wonder if that's what they're doing. Imagine water underneath your feet, maybe. Mm. Upon hearing the line about the gearhead almost being recovered and all that, and Clanker would yell out in the crowd, "That's what we heard last fucking time!" And it's still no water yet. What's taking him? You notice uh, Damo immediately cut eyes at you very sternly, and Bandy takes his time to turn toward you, to turn toward you, and he just kind of looks, and he's just like, as I said to the people, you can rest assured his recovery is almost complete. It's not my fault if infections accrue, and that his bed rest is more needed than most. He looks up to the, looks up above him towards the, the box. He goes, is not our own elder sick? Has he recovered? Why don't you have Clanker take a look? Mask points his thumb over to Clanker. He can fix stuff. Oh shit, that was more than I bargained for. <laughs> <laughs> Mako kind of looks a little distressed and... Yaka kind of looks like, whoa, where's this going? You know, kind of eager almost. Clanker looks at Mask like he's a fucking moron. And <laughs> he is, that's the problem. <laughs> and just, just, look, just like starts shaking his head at the ground like, fuck, mate. Bef you know. Before that, uh, before Avan Saxon sees Clanker saying that, is that he did not mean it that way, Lord Bandy. Bandy just kind of looks and the side of his mouth curls up into a a sneer slash grin. He just goes, I will not have some common stranger sully 
my territory. Who knows what kind of mischief he might wreak. Indeed, Lord Bandy, as always, your words are full of wisdom. As mere common folk just are tongue-tied when you speak. But do understand, it has been a thirsty few days. Kind of, oh man, damn the dice. He kind of turns and he's like going, yes, it has indeed been trying times. Since it was you, Sakharin, speaking, go ahead, if you want to, give me a scout roll. Uh, okay. So, hold on. What? I say scout roll. Anything on the gear dice? No, you don't have any. Okay, never mind. Yeah, Mask is completely confused. Uh, he looks at Sacred. Sacred is speaking on his behalf, which he usually allows to do, so he doesn't continue, but he, he kind of falls. Well, I, I, I don't understand. He, he could help? And Saturn looks to Mask. Sometimes people don't want our help. I'll explain later, Mask. There's sometimes plans will have plans. When you say that, he is completely confused. He does not know what that means. But he just kind of stares in your direction and then just knows enough to not say anything else. Jeez. So the, the general gist is, is nobody's happy, and you notice in time, General Yaku immediately demands for more help. We need more help, more weapons and armaments to protect the people. It's like, Lord Bandy, lend, lend us some of your guns. The spring, the, the winter's frost has begun to thaw. So who knows what terrors are out there. Given enough time, Lockjaw will start his hunt again. And y'all know the name Lockjaw. He's supposedly a giant albino alligator. Like, prehistoric giant. Like, 30 foot long, 40 foot long. Got six legs. And he's been known to prey, prey upon stuff around the, the, the coastline, around the water and stuff. At least that's what the tales say. But, yeah, Yaka's immediately making demands and stuff like that. You notice the whole time when everybody's arguing about what needs to be done for the be the betterment of the people, the good of the people, old Yaka's just kind of like, or not Yaka, but Mako's just kind of like laid back. He can't quite tell initially if he just doesn't care or if just, uh, you don't know, it's kind of hard to tell. He just doesn't seem that interested in it, but... Ultimately, when people start proposing what it is that needs to be done for the Ark, he just kind of like looks at y'all and he's like, Go on, he says, uh, Right then, let's go on, speak your minds. Each of y'all have earned your chance to talk for the better of the people in my minds. This is about the guns, yes. Uh, that being said, in a normal session, what you do is, um, you start off by going through the projects thing, and what you do is you actually create projects that y'all wish to work on. Uh, each person can nominate one. Um, you'll notice they have requirements on them. You sure? And just because you nominate one doesn't mean you have to work on it. It just adds it to the list. And I do believe at the end of the session, y'all roll and you contribute work points to it whenever you basically match the work points. The project's completed, get the bonuses and stuff like that. Um, 
Some of them have a development level requirement before you can do it. Uh, the skills are basically what skills you can contribute to that project. So like if you look at the first one, defenses, it says force or scout. If you have the force or scout ability, you can basically contribute that skill as your role. One of the two, whichever one. Uh, since there is four of you playing, it would be the work points times four. And then once it's completed, that's the bonus it gives to your... If you notice on the arc stat sheet, which is a character sheet in the uh, arc folder, your levels, food supply 2, culture 2, technology 2, warfare 6. But if you wish to not look through it and try to nominate a project, that would be your chance basically to speak out in the assembly that's going on. I'm over... I'm over detailing it just basically to give you a feel for how it works. It basically serve as a lead into it. From here on, I'll just be like an assembly's a quiet, you know, an assembly gathers what you wish to contribute, what you wish to work on. So, the question is, I mean, are we going to get more information, or are we trying to like, are we trying to help Bandy or Yaka? Is that what Mako is asking us to do, or? No, right now, this is the first part of a session. Basically, y'all can create work projects that you work on for the arc, the betterment of the arc. This is basically uh, right. Yeah, as far as the situation, this is this is the, this is the time. I'm just using a little bit of role play, lead in, and role play for y'all to basically do this section, what y'all would normally do. I think there's fifteen dollars in my shirt pocket. Yeah, on, and all honestly, if you wish to look at the projects later, you can, and then add it in. We can basically just skip ahead to what happens after that. I mean, Mask would pick whatever Sacred wanted, so that's what he would do. Yeah, but... Just so saying. Expedition sounds good to me. Go out, get some water, get some supplies. Because we're fucked on water, apparently. Yeah. Yeah, but, but yeah, and all honestly, for for simplification of the game itself, that the, y'all just, y'all can go ahead and look at it, and you can basically nominate your projects, and we can handle that stuff, even if we have to on Discord. Sure. Makes sense. Yeah, that's one of those situations where, like, I was just giving you the chance if y'all wanted to speak out, but, you know. But basically, y'all voice your opinion as you nominate on behalf of Mako's side of the, the, the arc what needs to be done, or at least initiated. Yaka, of course, is, like, going through demands of, like, you know, we need defense, we need armor, blah, blah, blah. And Bandy's just, like, going for off the wall shit to basically make the place look nicer and stuff like that in the end y'all's decisions will be what was made uh and in time the assembly itself begins to dissolve and y'all start to meander around and as you're breaking up and stuff like that uh go ahead and draw some of y'all out. Clankers, you're going around. You notice a female mutant start to approach you. Mm, what's your intent like? Does it look uh, aggressive or just walking up? Uh, it's the stalker. She's a stalker named Merrick. Uh, she's not in your gang. She's actually in a minor boss's gang. Minor boss being Brutus. His name is Brutus. But she approaches you. You know that from her demeanor and nature that she might kind of like you. No. Because she's pretty much upfront about it. But she hasn't really, like, officially made any physical advances. It's all been, like innuendo and just direct outness, you know, like drop a crude line and then see how you react to it and stuff like that. But she comes sauntering up to you and she's just like, she's like, well, hello there. Imagine me meeting you here. Oh, 
Well, good day, Sheila. Yeah, meeting at the assembly. It's a, it's a wild thing. It's looking through some scrap on the ground, trying to pick out some stuff for some projects. She kind of looks at you and she's just like, no. Wish I had time to mix words better, but about to go out into the zone. Gonna go do a little bit of the hunt, you know? If I can find that worthless sidekick of mine. But, uh, just wondering, is there anything you might need out there while I'm in the zone? Oh, shit, that's a good question. Well, what would it cost me? She just grins and almost blushes as she thinks about what she might charge you. She's going, uh, uh, just cons consider it a favor. Just didn't know if you had any desires that needed to be filled while I was out in the zone. Uh, well, if you happen to find any uh, little doodads, like they could hold some things together, like, uh, I don't know, bolts. Nuts, uh, nails, anything like that. I appreciate it. You have my thanks, and uh, I'd owe you a favor. She's kind of like a, never would have figured you for one that fancies shinies. That's girl work. Oh, shit, she like work on anything. Doesn't matter to me. I'll put whatever together. Not much careful people think. Kind of like Grant. She goes, well, righto then. Shine as it is. If I see any while I'm out, I'll let you know. Right now, though, I have to go and find that worthless dunderhead rock bark. Well, I wish you the best of luck on that, Sheila. Take she, care of yourself out there. She just kind of like nods. You do the same in here. She ultimately takes off. This mask is kind of like sauntering around realizing where you went to uh, kind of notice another figure lurking nearby she just begrudgingly almost starts creeping over towards you clanker oh fucking hell I'm popped up today <laughs> <laughs> said mask is near me. Yeah, but she comes and she's real nervous look on her face and she's kind of like real fidgety and looking around. And don't try to find her damn character sheet. If I was wearing that among all these fucking ruffians, I'd be nervous too. I think she forgot her pants. She's, yeah, she's a very tall woman, very thin, and uh, her hair is almost translucent on across her forehead, it's like an irregular mark. Looks like a birthmark, but it looks really weird. Uh, Vic Jim kind of nudges Mask in the ribs with his elbow and says, I don't think she forgot, mate. <laughs> He looks at Fig Jam and looks around very confused. But as she creeps over real nervously, looks and she ultimately asks, she's like, Pardon me, but couldn't help but notice. Was that Mirak you were talking to? Yeah, it was. What of it? Do you, know, do you know where she's gone? Girl looks really, really nervous. Mm, what is it? What is it? Um, sense emotion to get a sense of somebody's demeanor? Because she's it's weird that she's asking to me. Is that what it would be to kind of get a sense of why she'd be interested? Or? Yeah, sense of motion. Let me take a look here. Time to fuck this up, lads. Duh. Man, 
not sensing any uh, any poor intent, I imagine. Um, oh, she said she's got to the zone, looking for uh, some stuff on the hunt. So she's going going out to the zone. Uh, yeah. She starts looking real distraught. And not really on the border of tears, but just really like upset. You got a you got a problem, Sheila? Uh, um, uh, kind of looks like she doesn't quite know how to respond to that. Uh, uh, you know, shit, the dice are in your favor this time. She just like, uh, I just wanted to talk to her. Uh, uh, Brutus said I was no longer under his protection and I didn't know what to do. I figured she might be able to help me out. She's like, I, I guess I'll be okay. D d d don't even worry about it. Don't, don't, don't worry about it. Uh, well... If you don't feel safe with uh, not being in protection, you can hang out in my hut, I guess, till she gets back and talk to her. <laughs> she just kind of looks, almost takes that step forward, like she wants to take you up on the offer, and she gets real fidgety and fretting, and she just, uh, uh, I'll, I'll go see if I can find Mirak first. She's, uh, I'll be all right, I'll be all right. I, I'm sorry to have bothered you. Yeah, well, there's where the, the hut is, and he points over to it. Just uh, close the door, and, you know, it's it's dark in there, so just let me know if you're still there so I don't fucking shiver you, okay? She bows slightly and several times. Yes, 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 thank you. Thank you, thank you. Starts muttering the word Mirak as she goes roaming off. He went her roam off and look at Sacker and his song trumps. What the fuck was that about? I don't know, Clanker, but you, my friend, are onto something. We could use her. Mm -hmm. We could use her. Mm -hmm. Uh, Clanker, I'm gonna give it to you because you're a gearhead. You notice, by the way, her hands are calloused and stained. And just the general demeanor, she's probably a gearhead. Ooh. I have something to look forward to. She actually takes me up on the staying in the hut business. Um, Fig Jam, you're doing your thing. And uh, as you notice, as you're going around with the group hanging out, you notice a uh, damn it kind of turn and sniff the air and not really snarl but just let out like a like acknowledging the presence of someone and staggering up towards all of y'all uh closest of course to fig jam you see uh this scrawny uh lies even though it's, it's, what's the what's the aging disease, progenera or whatever it's pronounced, but yeah, it is, yeah, here we go. Well, this, <laughs> this this he's like wearing tatters of stuff. Like it looks like he's wearing part of a friggin' trash bag and a burlap sack, and got his shoes all wrapped up in rags. And, But he comes running up. Uh, as soon as he talks, y'all immediately recognize the voice. It's Orion, the leader of a small gathering of cultists that live outside in the rickets. He, uh, be closest to Fig Jam. But he comes, basically, coming up to you and immediately drops down prone and starts groveling. He's like, please, please, please tell me that you have water. I, I, my people need water. Yeah, mate. We haven't got any to spare. 
starts immediately starts busting down and it's like, please, I'll do anything for water, water. Our people are dying. There's no one here that seems to give a shit. Big Jim kind of looks around at his companions. Crikey, I, I, this one, get in here. He probably just fucking walked in. Jack is too busy talking about guns and not fucking using them. He... Oh. Well, my friend, he's got a uh, new business on the horizon. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he looks at Sacred. Hang around for about an hour. <laughs> uh, yeah, I... My good sir, you seem quite odd, quite odd. Where may I say you from again? It's like... I am the leader of the Sentinels. We live outside in the rickets. I'm not normally allowed inside. I'm so thirsty. So very, very thirsty. Well, there's a puddle up there. And he points back up. I suppose you can find it. Oh, God. He immediately, like, starts to look as if it's nearby. Whenever he doesn't see it, he just starts grabbing the hands full of dirt and letting them crumble between his fingers. He goes, I knew that we were doomed, but I did not expect it to be so painful. Please, someone here, anyone, water, water. And he starts raising his tone of voice and his begging and uh, mask. You start hearing the trudging of boots coming up from behind you. And... You see a rather large, mannish, four-armed lady. Come tromping up. Oh, fuck, make way. Mass turns and looks at her and looks back at the guy, very confused. And, oh, I, I don't think there's water there. He's pointing to all the dirt in his hands. Eventually, kind of just steps out of the way. Mate, I don't know what you're looking for, but you better book it. I'm just telling you, what to advice and uh, trying to get out of the Fig way, Jim. making way. Fig Jim looks around and finds some sort of container on the ground and pours this guy serving water out of his canteen. Okay. Sac Sacrin will kind of move towards Mozzie. Okay, so you're going to pour a day's worth of water? Uh, you're going to pour the water about the time Mask acknowledges the footsteps and all of y'all in turn hear the gruff voice of this four-armed green-skinned lady. That she's like going, like, Orion, you know you're not supposed to be here. You're not trespassing. She looks at uh, Fig Jam as he's pouring the water, and he's just like, "Stop that! He knows the rules." Yeah, hey, Mossy, the geese is dying. She stops. She kind of stops, almost like shoulder to shoulder, but you know, there's like a good foot or two apart between her and Mask, and she just kind of like stops, and stares at you as if she's trying to see what's behind beneath the, the eye hole in your mask. Yeah, Mass is looking straight at her cleavage as she <laughs> oh, comes up. Man. Just he, I mean, he doesn't even realize what, that it's inappropriate or that he's even doing it. When, when she finally affixes her gaze upon what you're looking at, she basically acknowledges, like, this dude's looking at my tits, you know? She, like, actually looks down to look at her cleavage and looks at you and you can't tell if it's a grin a chuckle or it's just a guffawing noise she just like grunts almost just, just ah. then she kind of like stops and turns around again then she finally looks she goes fine give him the water but he's got to go outside it's where he belongs sure thing mozzie Big Jim gives the Ryan the crumpled up cup of water. Yeah, mate. Okay. Tuck your day of water, and Orion just like totally fucking freaks out with 
gratuity over the simple fact that somebody gave him water. He's just like, oh, oh, thank you, thank you, oh, oh, oh. He says, the makers be praised. He says, oh, he says, oh, who says there's no kindness left in this soulless husk of a world? And he's like, starts laughing at the water, trying not to drink it all, because he knows he has like 20 other people outside that'll probably kill him for it. But as a good leader for a cult, he has to, you know, his, Mentally, you're thinking he has to go out there and it's like, look what I have brought for you, behold the penalties. <laughs> but he's like immediately, oh, thank you, thank you. Then he gets yanked up off the ground by Mozzie. <laughs> and he's like super like, come on now, don't spill it. It's all you'll get from us today. And starts brusquely escorting him out of the arena to where he belongs. And he's so lost in being happy at the fact that he has water, he doesn't even seem to care. But he's being jacked up, kicked out of the damn art. So Jim looks around at his companions. Crikey, mates, we got to do something. There isn't water in here, there isn't water out there. How are we going to start our business? <laughs> huh. All right, uh... Sakharin, you said something about wanting to roleplay about projects. Is it going to be currently where we're at, or are you wanting to...? Uh, yeah, I mean, so that when, when Musk asks him about the the business, he Sakharin looks at the rest of them and he says, Well, tell me, what do you see when you look around you? And then kind of Sakharin kind of goes around in like a slow 360. Tell me, what do you see? Garbage and shit, mostly. I there see you go. A, a chair. He points at a chair. <clears throat> As turns. There's the floor. Points at the floor. Yes, Musk. Thank you for the obvious. But no. Fig Jam. Like Fig Jam said, there's shit. There's shit everywhere. So, do you know what grows out of shit? Food, a... fools, food, and you know what likes shit? Pigs. You know what pigs are? Food. You oh, see, I, you I see. see where Sacred's going with this. Mm. Right you are, Fig Jam. You know why Bandy's all lord and mighty up there? Because he's got a handle on the water. Now we know we are late to the game. We don't know where the water source is, as we would have pumped it out ourselves. But if the water does come back, what do you think the people are going to look to next? Hmm? Food. Yaka can scream all about he wants about the walls. The walls does not feed. Yeah, the ark's good and safe, I think. Yeah. Yeah, the he's got a fucking gun in every hand here. Just looking around, looking at the guards with guns. The walls certainly doesn't feed. Never been able to eat one. Yes, Mask. And if you try to, it's gonna break all your teeth. Though I don't know if anything can break you. Oh. Maybe that uh, Sheila that was here earlier. Ooh. She might burn you, buddy. Hmm. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't put in that. No. No, no, I wouldn't do that. But anyway. Back on more important matters, bud. Mask, for what it's worth, you just suddenly realize that she has four arms too. <laughs> oh, he he doesn't either he doesn't notice or doesn't care. He's just like Sakran. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Can't count that high. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she has three arms. <laughs> <laughs> I said for what it's worth, please continue. Five, three, three, sir, yeah. So, here's what I suggest. We try and go out and wrestle with some pigs. Hmm? Get them back here. Feed them shit. Create pigs pig eat stuff. shit. Hmm. They love shit. <laughs> so you see, when people have to shit, we can take their shit from them. Hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. See, this is what I mean. The right red eye and the blue eye, man. This is what I mean by the red eye and the blue eye. 
We take the people's shit, we feed it to the pigs, the pigs grow. And then we feed the pigs back to them. It's a fucking cycle, man. Mm. Think about it. So it's sort of like masking the water business thing. Exactly. It's a business that feeds itself. And that's the lovely business to be in. Okay. I don't mind this idea, but uh, where the fuck are we getting pigs from, mate? We gotta go out there. There surely should be some pigs. Well, and then there's the other end of that question. Where are we gonna put them when we get them back? Oh, I can fucking handle that. Yeah, like I can't put together a fucking wall somewhere. Put them in Clanker's tent. Fuck off. No, we'll ask... Look, any good fucking plan starts with Marco's approval. I think we can all agree on that, yeah? If we get him yeah. on board with it, he can fucking make it work. And get us what we need to build the, uh... You know, the fence in for the, the fuckers. The little pigs. Yeah, we Sacred. just get the fucking meat. Sacred. What about our plan? Your plan needs some work, bud. You know what we're gonna do for your plan? We're gonna start first small. I'm gonna put you in a cage, bud, and you're gonna beat the shit out of everyone who is out there. We're gonna make some money with that, buy some bottles, get you some water, make you piss the water out into the bottles, and then sell those bottles. We gotta mm. start small and then think big, bud. Hmm. I like that plan. Mm. I hmm. knew you would. It's been some time since you bashed somebody's head in, and I can see it. Well, I wouldn't mind. Mm -hmm. And the next time you're looking at mozzie stits, I wouldn't do that. <laughs> I wouldn't do that. He lo His eyes like dart from Sacred to Clanker to back to Fidjim. What you talking about? Mm-hmm. That sack might cover your face, but I know where your eyes are going, but mm. Okay, so this fuck is pit fighting, and then we're making a shit pen for pigs, yeah? Mm -hmm. So uh, <laughs> we need we need to go talk to Marco and make this shit happen, yes? Yes. And you know what people like when they're watching cage fighting? They like to eat. They like to eat parts of pigs. Man, I'm just full of ideas today morning. Mm. Mm -hmm. we're, gonna, we're gonna connect the fucking pig business to the pit fighting then yes Jesus fucking Christ alright well I, I think we should leave the pit fighting part out when we bring it to Marco because I don't think that'll get anything other than fucking sneering approval that's it's right pig sty and maybe uh, let him keep his nose clean on that one in case that's not uh, in case that's frowned upon eh? well I don't need to fight I can give hugs. Yeah, bear hugs, mask. Looks crush sick. them, crush them, mask. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. Let me ask you a question. If we fought, could we drink their blood? If they died, instead of water, then I could piss the blood out. It might be a red vintage instead of yellow. Mask, I may treat you like an idiot most times, but bud, you, of all the ideas I've just come across, that was the best I've heard so far. Well, I'm very educated. More than one can imagine. Right, let's, uh... So you don't think, Clanker? You don't like that idea? I don't give a fuck what you do. But, anyways, and looks back at Saccharin. Uh, I'm assuming. You know, go, go ahead, go ahead. No, go ahead. I was just gonna say. I was just saying, I was, I was assuming that it was you, basically, because you said you sent a message you were gonna work on projects. Yeah, yeah, so that this was, was basically. That was what the role play was leading into. Yes, yes, this was the role play for that. Okay. Cool, because I was gonna energize just saw what time it was. Wanna get y'all actually going, going. Yep. But as, as you're conversing in the the great debate of shitting the feed pigs to feed the people while 
pissing and bottling it, reselling it, beating the shit out of people, bottling their blood to sell it alongside the piss, all continues to writhe around like a washing machine. Um, Saccharin, you finally, you ultimately feel a sharp, pokey finger just hit you out of nowhere and it startles the shit out of you. And as soon as the finger hits you, you immediately hear a girl's voice go, Boo! her creeping up just right before she did it but it's Fenna her nickname's Fen it's Mako's little sister Oi you know you're not supposed to do that oh, almost made me seem like a girl in front of these guys over here mm. Mm. he loses his body functions easy I'm like, that's the best thing ever. She goes, ah, I scared you. I got you. I got you. Yes, you did. Ah. Mm. You like, want me to hold him down so you can tickle him? <laughs> oh, her eyes just totally light up with that idea. She goes, damn 50 50 chance. She goes, yeah, sure. I'm bored, anyways. Mask. Mask. Reaches and bear to, hugs to, sacred. Yeah, she starts to wiggle her fingers like she's warming them up. Are you gonna let yourself be caught? I'm not gonna actually make a roll for it if you just. I wanna... don't think I'll be able to uh, okay. uh, keep mask off me. Okay, as, as you go to advance away and take two of your hands to try and block his big meaty maw, paw as it comes lunging towards you, it, it, it's it's kind of pointless. He manages to grab you by the wrist, yank you towards him, and pretty much got you in his bear hug. Kind of moves it up to a, it's kind of hard to get in a full Nelson on somebody with four arms, but he's, pretty, he's a pretty big dude, so he catches you and she just immediately just starts going to town, just tickling the shit out of you. And given that I have four armpits now, she can tickle me four <laughs> times as much. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so I'm like... <laughs> First time people are kind of hearing Saturn laugh and realize that there is somewhere within him, deep within him, there is a little girl that is aching to come out. <laughs> <laughs> Mask, I'm going to get you for this. <laughs> and, and, and Finn immediately notices Mask laugh and she's like immediately drawn to it like a moth to the flame and her eyes widen more and she like immediately spins around and gets behind mask and starts tickling him while he's holding his hat <laughs> <laughs> he just kind of <laughs> he like falls on the ground and is like flailing about like a ba big baby <laughs> no more no. he's like slap fighting her hands away uh Anna, Mask doesn't know how to laugh. Stop doing that to him. You're gonna break him. <laughs> do, do yeah, do a roll, do a, just do a simple dice six roll for me. <laughs> oh. Mm, oh, that's the high end. Uh Mask because he's laughing, telling her to stop, stop. He just like lets out an enormous fart. <laughs> 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 he he kind of like grabs his butt and pats it to make sure it's not wet. <laughs> <laughs> and like the the fart was more than enough for her. She just like immediately withdraws. <laughs> kind of like, her nose, and <laughs> she just kind of like looks and still like after she like gets a laugh and the rest of y'all cut your looks and the onlookers start to like what the fuck is going on over there. She like ultimately adopts like the little girl pose where she's like kind of rocking back and forth with her arms behind her back and they're in front of her. She's like, so what are you guys doing? We're talking about shit. <laughs> she's kind of like, ooh. She goes, I'm bored. You guys want to do something? Mm, why not? What do you got in mind? She, I don't know. She kind of like looks as if she's remembering something and she goes, Oh, wait. I can't. Then the look of just 
despondency immediately is overcome by a mischievous wry smile as she just like kind of like continues to rock but even now it's faster and more so and she just like goes <laughs> i got a secret mm -hmm. and this is secret is gonna cost me is it not fena mm. what shouldn't you can't what shouldn't you be telling us uh, you're gonna have to give me a manipulate roll. She's like, uh uh, it's a secret. It's something good, though. Mm. How about if I get you a shiny from outside? Her eyes light up and she immediately counters. Well, how about you take me outside? Oh. Yeah. Mm. No, no, I like to live, Fena, and I do not want to wind up as pig food when Mako finds out that I took you out. No. I would like to make other people pig food, not myself. That's not how good business works, young lady. As soon as, as, soon as you say the name Mako, she immediately like hunkers down and winces as if she's like ducking a blow. And then she like looks around to see if he's there and her cheerfulness is kind of immediately deflated momentarily. And, you know, and and all in all intents and purposes between us out, outside the game, Mako, Ma she is basically Mako's slave. Mm. Yeah, she's actually a slave archetype. That's her character class. And he's like the older, the stern older brother. You know, it's just like you know, what are your girl do this? I'm just, so this, you know, I'm doing this for your good. You know, we got to do this for the people. He, he's real stern about it. He's also very, he's very protective about it too. So, how about if I try and make a deal with her? Um, I get her a shiny um, from the outside if she tells me what her secret is. Uh, that's gonna entail the manipulate role. Okay, so... Oh, I do have a make a deal empathy, so I was going for that. But do manipulate. Here we go. I will give you a pl Oh, you already got a success, don't yeah. worry. I was gonna introduce modifications, but don't worry about it. Okay. She just kind of like thinks about it and trying her best not to show that the idea of a shiny on the outside in her mind is like a present, you know, like the best thing ever. It's Christmas. And she just ultimately, she goes, ah, ah, fine, okay, I want a shiny. She says, she leans in close and she kind of cusps her hand across the front of her mouth and she's like going, big brother's gonna let you guys go outside today. Mm -hmm. Oh, fuck. Saccharin has a ear to your smile now. And what does he want to do with us outside, Fena? She's just like, I don't know, but I wish you guys would take me. I've never seen outside the Ark before. How old is Fena? She's youngish. Probably 19 to 21 ish. Hmm. Well, Fena, let me tell you what. Probably percent more like, yeah, about 18 to 20 more. So, kind of, Saxon kind of lifts his hand. When you grow yay high, I will take you out myself. Till then, I will bring you the shiny from the outside. How does that sound? Mm, she just kind of like looks like her mood's sour. She's just like, now, don't go sulking about. I'm getting you a shiny. She's kind of harumped. Like, I wish you'd take me with me, but all right. She's like, don't tell Big Brother that I told you, though. And she once again, she starts to kind of like hunker down, rubs her shoulders as if remembering something. She's looking around for him. Don't worry. Uh, lips are sealed. I put my arm around the uh, saccharine's shoulder and as the assembly pretty much breaks up and stuff like that you find yourselves meandering about because the way the mako mako doesn't have a headquarters so to speak he basically is people live up on either side of the bleachers like adjacent on the same side as the stage so as y'all are meandering about, you notice that Mako's standing there and he's kind of talking to Boz a little bit. And he notices y'all over there and he just like waves. Luckily he didn't notice uh, Fena 
with y'all. She's like the parts. He like waves his big meaty blue hand and motions y'all to come towards him. Yeah. As as uh, I'm assuming we're all moving along, Clanker's just gonna look at Sack and shake that off. We're fucked. This is gonna be bad. I know that. Mask gets up to his knees as he's been wrestling around with Damon. <laughs> We're fucked. Where? Oh, In the ass, well. probably. About oh. 30 meters that way. We're about to be fucked and pointing over to make them yeah. waving us over. I don't like that. Yeah, the sudden urge to check your ass for moistness again suddenly fills your mind. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he kind of is taking it literal. He kind of looks around, kind of <laughs> get, like this beady-eyed, like look, you know. And he looks kind of ah, uh, okay. Gets up and just kind of starts falling, sacred. Well, yeah, y'all are starting to notice that the the, the, the hellish, orangish, reddish glow of the morning sun is starting to crest a little bit distance. Yeah, he motions over and y'all approach. He's just kind of like standing there and then he crosses his arms and looks all authoritative. And Boz just kind of like sidesteps back, joins y'all's group. He's like, right then, it's like this. You lot have proven yourself useful. He's, I heard you speak out of the assembly. So I think it's time to take it up a notch. Just, I think old Boz here and you should go out and explore the zone some. He just nods as if he totally agrees with what he just said. He goes, that's right. It's time to cut your teeth on the real world. Any objections? Nobody. He's like, hey, right. boss, you ever seen any pigs? Pigs? You can hear his stomach rumble quite audibly, and he's like, oh, it's been quite a while since I've seen pigs. It's kind of like, Gets lost in thought for a moment. He goes, I'm sure they're out there. Then he kind of frowns at you. He's like, no, all I can think about is pigs. Mm. Well, boss, what say we try and find us some pigs? Mm. Oh, that'd be heavenly if you found pigs. Mm. Rubs his big old blue gut. They're He's going like, to stay in Clanka's room looks to you, Mask, and then he looks at Clanker, and he kind of guffaws a little bit, and he goes, Dark Show! I shake my head. No, my... No. <laughs> Mask is just nodding. He doesn't notice Clanker disagree. Well, boss. We was thinking a few pigs could make us some Money, some bullets. And make bullets, yeah. Make bullets, huh? Eh? Mm. And give us leverage. Important to have food. Almost as important as having water. Kind of rotates his shoulder little bit as if he's contemplating what you're saying. He's like, oh, do tell. Assuming y'all explain y'all's plan. Mm -hmm. And in fact, it kind of goes over that whole spiel again for Mako. Like, what do you, what do you, what do you, what do you see when you look around and he does the whole 360, <laughs> you know, making, <laughs> making the sale, talking about the, the full cycle of the business. Yeah, Mako like folds his arm across his chest and he's like rubbing at his throat. He's listening rather attentively. Raises an eyebrow and then he ultimately just grins and he just sounds like a really good idea. And he kind of, once again, he iterates himself. He goes, That is, if we got enough water to keep the damn thing alive. 
Yeah. Well, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Nah, he's like, yeah, right, you do that. First, I want you lot to go outside, spend a day in the zone, see what goods you can find and bring them back to me. Sounds old good. Bars here, old bars here knows the way. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Uh. Okay. Boss. Is boss all there? Hmm. He don't look chopped up. Boz don't seem to be bothered by what you're saying. He's just standing by dutifully. Mako kind of like looks kind of like really trying to figure out what exactly you're getting at. And he's like, he says, Boz is all right by me. This message might be a little crude, but he gets the job done. He's quick as a rabbit. Always like a hawk. Just look at him the way they bulge. Kind of laughs. Yeah, yeah. I saw the hawk today morning eating a a rat, a rot rat. Well, well, well. We shall try to be back. Yeah, make us stomach. Be. Yeah, make us stomach grumbles again. I ought to play. Like I ain't seen many rats around these days. Yeah. We didn't see it for too long either, boss. You lot, make sure you're strapped, wrapped, and ready to rock and roll, then head on out with balls, see what you can scrounge up. I'll look for you this evening. Going on a walkabout. Boss kind of like interjects himself then, he's just like, that's right. Hopefully we don't have to run that much. I don't no, mind running. We need to give good old Mask here a good runabout. He's been cooped up too long. You're gonna be running if we're out there eating the dingoes breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> Mask just stares at you and has no idea what you meant. <laughs> good. Yeah, it's ultimately, basically, Mako's just giving you a, a chance to go out in the zone and explore it. Mm -hmm. And y'all basically check, check sure you make sure your supplies are ready, stock up, make sure your weapons are serviceable, and following Boz's lead, I'll proceed to head out into the zone. Welcome to the real world. This is a map. Y'all can see that Halo is depicted where hopefully it centered you all on. Mm hmm. And made a token for you. Um. I know that guy. He's special. <laughs> but as y'all go to make your way, you go to the, um... The stadium is not fully intact, by the way. It's, like, broken and segmented. And they have crude makeshift barricades at certain parts, but... Some are more accessible than the others. The most accessible are the ones that are guarded the most. You make your way past some of Yaka's protectors and stuff like that, and they want to know what you're doing and all that, and you all identify yourselves, and Boz lets them know, and they ultimately let you out. And as you're exiting the Ark itself, this boss kind of like puffs up, and he's like, like Right then, Mako wants us to head west. He says he wants to see if the water's warm enough to take a dip in yet or not. What water? <laughs> you live right next to the damn water and you... <laughs> yeah, right. 
Uh, he has no idea. Uh, so, I don't know how much I know about Lockjaw, but is he west of us, typically? Or just kind of anywhere there's water nearby? Uh, Tails have it that he likes to frequent up and down the coast of the actual ocean. Oh, uh, okay. No worries there. He just uh, winters up here in the river. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Freshwater shark! Oh, yeah. But no, each, each, this is, the, the, the zone itself is broken out into a grid-like pattern. Each square on the grid is called a zone, or sector. Each sector is roughly one square mile territory. But Boz wants you to, he says, make those orders, head west. From there, y'all can choose the other two locations, but he okay. wants to let's, go west. Let's do, let's go west. Uh, it is currently, if you open up the, or I can make y'all look at it. It is currently spring, it is dawn, so let's have, to have your hours of daylight. It's nighttime, that's when the creeps come out. The freaks come out at night. Type. But it's currently dawn as y'all begin your expedition. Uh, each zone that you explore takes roughly four hours if you've never been there before. Based on how well the stalker rolls, determines he can spend stunts that are a result. If he gets more than one success, he can spend stunts to reduce the time. Um, but... This is going to be key. So if one of y'all wants to move yourself one square west, I think they all have access to the group token. I will go ahead and... Roll buzz. Sector is a sign of threat rating, that's why I'm supposed to roll dice. And based off of the number of dice rolled and the results will determine what hap what's actually in the zone. detects artifacts if there's any in that zone he would then have to spend stunts in order to find the find a safe spot through uh, but he failed the roll and you got those results and that'll be exactly what I had pre-set up so we'll move on uh, as you make your way out of the arc you notice that the river and the water is immediately outside the arc. You notice that the area that you're traveling on is the set of ruins, structures, and houses and stuff like that. Most everything's devastated. You might see like a partial framework here, partial framework there. Um, what's standing out up ahead in the distance you see looks to be like a series of docks like, you know, partially broken, collapsed, and stuff like that. And there appears to be some kind of structure that um is set back a little bit from the docks themselves. 
and it looks to be the most prominent feature in this area. That being said, as you're making your way, you know, it, it might be a, a feasible spot to head in that direction in order to get down from the docks somehow. Maybe there's stairs or ramps and stuff to get down onto the water itself and test the water, so to speak. Boz in his mind immediately reports back. Things look clear ahead. We should go ahead and do what Mako asked us to. You're the stalker, mate. I don't know shit about outside. Alright. So y'all begin to make your way. The structure itself becomes a little more identifiable. You start seeing the collapsed shells and husk of what appears to be boats of some kind. They're like flipped upside down and stuff. You even see some sunken wood and stuff. Nothing really salvageable. It's just like the wreckage and stuff. And it appears that the structure and to us, once again at the table, is like a marina of some kind. But uh, as you're making your way down to descend to get to a good access point to it, obscures your vision. Your eyes tear up and the smog burns the nose and mouth when you start to breathe or try to breathe. Uh, your visibility is... Oh, shit. Oh, okay. Moving along. Stop the coughing. Till dark, mate. Top right corner ish. You start making your way down, and Boz is trying to be as careful as possible. He starts at one point, he holds a hand up, and you can barely see it in front of you. And he's basically like, hey, hey, stop. <coughs> like, fuck that gun. Yeah, he's like pulled a scarf up covering his nose and mouth. He's muffled speaking to it. He's like, we're here. Keep your wits about you and eyes shut. Mass basically Where takes the fuck his. Is here, mate? Yeah. While you're talking, Mass takes his mask and like stretches it so it closes the nose holes and his mouth hole like shut slightly. Sacrin takes out, takes off his special glasses, folds them, and puts them in his pocket. And then he kind of uh, lifts one of his arms and tries to cover his nose. Yeah, even though it's real thick and it, it causes issue to breathe, it doesn't seem to be like lethal. Fog rises. It's just more than anything. It's like a major deterrent visually. Even though it's dawn, it's like freaking so thick right now, you couldn't even tell what time of day it was. Mm. If you wish to proceed, uh, y'all can start to move. I will assume that Boz will be accompanying whoever moves the furthest. Fucking stay close. Get fucking lost out here in this shitty fog. That's not a sound effect. This is me rinsing this shit. I don't know. Let's see, it's in the water. <laughs> Big damn mate. How's damn it doing? 
you can clearly hear the sound of water nearby, but just trying to find it's the hard part. He's okay, Clanker. Can't see anything in this bloody mess either, though. You can definitely see the wall of a structure ahead of you, too. You know, that's what, what you got to the north. Sacrum, you want to hold my hand? Sacrum doesn't say anything but ends up holding Mask's hand. Ah, fuck. <laughs> we won't uh, get split. And Boz starts to clamber, hunker down with his rifle in his hand. Hey, Mask. Mm. When you let go of it, don't smell it. Where's it been? Places you don't want to know. I asked. Clanker's also gonna draw his machete that's with him because he doesn't trust anything about this. At your convenience, everybody just give me a scout roll. Oh boy. I wonder what's gonna happen. Um, nothing for me. <laughs> Oh, good boy, damn it. Uh, has to be the dog. Um, you know, this damn it becomes, um, uh, curious with a strong mixture of, uh, agitated. Not mad, agitated, just like kind of erratic behavior. She's, or he's starting to cock his head to the side. He's like blowing his nose and sneezing repeatedly from the fog, but just kind of cocks his head and then it like stops, hunkers its butt and tail down, becomes real rigid and just starts going. Mm -hmm. As y'all continue to move, what direction is Dammit looking in? Exhibits? No real, no real direction. It's just like it's acknowledged stuff. All right, watch him, boy. What the fuck is that? Man, I was fucking hear that. I did, like a. I sound like a. I don't know. A whisper? Only loud? Second, I'm gonna drop your hand now and hold my axe. You Boss. can grab my belt. Boss, what the fuck is that? You've been out here, yeah, what the fuck is that? Mate, yeah, what the fuck is that? Maybe we should go back. Yeah, I'm thinking it too, mate. Uh, I'm not fucking liking this at, at all, actually. Sacrum, what should we do? Ah, fuck. Step back. I don't know what the fuck it is, but it doesn't sound good. Oh, slowly. Like Fuck boss. <clears throat> that shit had brought us here anyway. Mate, what? Boss, mate, what, what the fuck are we hearing, mate? No way, boss, what the hell, mate? Uh oh. Oh no, fuck it, mate. Fuck it. Fuck it, mate. Mask. Clank Let me up. Let me hold your hand! Um... She'll start to go about and notice the noises. You hear a sudden shuffling sound, accompanied by the roar. I'm gonna adjust my volume. It's a really loud song. But, uh... Shambling 
forth. Y'all know there's large, two large shapes up here. Um, <laughs> y'all are still moving. <laughs> 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 y'all, y'all, stop moving, please. <laughs> uh, because Boz, Boz, failed his uh, find the path, so he did not. He did not spot them in time, so shambling forth from the fog, almost in predatorial fashion, you see two large reptiles um, lumber forth from the, the fog itself. Uh, if y'all wish to, y'all can please give me a know the zone roll. some light like maybe one of our visions oh yeah i'll give her access to try bonds because the rest of us can't even fucking see this shit yeah <laughs> <laughs> they say bitty base oh, i remember a story about them big lizards they are i'm here for the pigs mate You might just have to drag that token back on the map. Yeah, that could be it. I have my Tihi guess. Drag it back on the map. I think she's got it now. Tiles got a 
tiebreaker one. Boz also has a one. Damn it. Oh, he's got a five agility though, thank god. Saccharin, you got a three versus that. So yeah, the giant reptile would go before you. And nobody else has ties. Uh, initiative is fixed unless, of course, you um, increase it through combat stunts. So it will be this order from... Alrighty. Look, I think in the combat it tells you what you can do. You might want to open your PDFs to the, uh, that are check uh, close combat, range combat. You'll probably want to also to check your abilities and stuff if you have a PDF handy. Uh, the combat map section helps a lot too. We'll, we'll pretty much set that based off of uh, what happens. Um, the one giant reptile is going to far away is it? Four squares. So it's a short range. One giant reptile, basically. Well, we all can't really see it, I'm sure. Y'all are too far away. I saw the vomit. Yeah, and it, basically the size of its throat billow out, and it just like spits a stream of acid at Boz. Let me guess, you have a playlist going and you're using Roll20 AM to insert a combat sound that breaks playlists all the time. It's just going through random. just wanted it to play normal. That's all. That's going to play all of them at once. I've seen that issue before with Roll Twenty Eight. I was just, I was just directly clicking it, and it just kept mm. playing and playing and mm. playing. 
But he immediately turns and pops the shot off with his rifle. And it strikes the... Hear the thing hissing. Uh, cool, it doesn't have armor. other one likewise decides to spit man I need four monitors oh oh shit And a stunt increases initiative. So that's another. Yeah, you hear by this time as it's coming in from the other side. <laughs> as the acid strikes him across and wounds him. He's not looking that hot. We'll then go to Saccharin. Uh, I'm just going to wait there. Do you want to stay there? Yep, I'm just going to stay there. All right, I'm just... <laughs> uh, he then goes to Fig Jam. All right, Fig Jam. Move back this way. I guess he's got to move all the way up. Shit, he still can't see him, even beside Boz. Oh, shit, I didn't do that, did I? I apologize. I so apologize. Holy fucking shit! Right, then, from back here. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, I guess Fig Jam will take a pot shot at the southern one of the two. The one that was previously shot, yeah. And that would be your shoot skill. Oh my god, look at you go, Mac Daddy. Holy shit! Uh, you got one success, which is perfectly fine. You have three stunts. Uh, if you look at the ranged combat, you can determine what effects you wish to do with your stunts. You can, for a one-for-one -one basis, increase the damage at one point for one success, one stunt. Uh, you can pin the enemy down, basically giving them fatigue, increase your initiative score by two points. Um, you can make it drop a weapon. Or you can knock it back or down on the ground. In my mind, you're using a scrap rifle, which is what, two damage? Right. Yeah, I, it, the smart thing would be to put the two points into straight up damage. Well, that's what I was thinking. Try and, try and put this thing down, maybe. And get, get one of them out of the fight. So 
So you're gonna shoot it before damage. Yep. Okay. You pop a shot and it renders it broken. Whenever your stat hits zero, even if it goes negative, you don't die. It's treated as zero. You're considered broken in that attribute. Uh, basically, I don't. Does the combat sheet have it there? What happens? Uh, you inflicted a critical injury upon the critter. Uh, if you want to roll critical injury to see what you did to it. Whenever you become broken, uh, you basically had enough and lacked the will or ability to continue on in the fight or the social conflict, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Oh, there's just a... Oh! Snap once again. This is where my slack Agnes comes into play. They're all hidden from you. Let me move over here where hopefully you guys can see them. Ah, okay. Go ahead and use a critical injury table. Damn it. Some damage spine. Jesus. She pop a resounding shot, basically flies right to the lower torso of the giant reptile, nick the spinal cord, and it starts to immediately become flailing around and hit despondency, basically. The lower half of its body is not responding. It's just flailing around. It's basically out of the fight. That was a very good damn shot, by the way. When Fig Jam yells, get the hell out of there, boss! Next up would be Mask. Um, which one is uh, injured? Or out? The bottom or the top? Okay. Bottom one's done, though. Um, mask like, should I go get him? Looking at Sacrum and just kind of actually doesn't respond. Uh, just doesn't wait and just rushes off. So, um, my movement is equal to my strength. Um, so is that how many squares I can move? Uh, or is it not, or is it just distance for the ruler? Like five would be here. And another five here. If I'm do taking two maneuvers. Uh, you are arms length. If you do a movement, moves five squares. Each maneuver that you spend on movement lets you move five squares. Okay. So and you can you can do one maneuver and one action. Do two. Mm-hmm. One, two, three, four. That's seven, eight, nine, ten. I just, I just run past Boz, just. Ah! Ah! Big, big, yeah. big giant axe in hand. Yep. Right. Then goes to Clanker. Oh boy. What am I gonna do here? So movement's based on your strength. Not for you. It's agility. I have it's a agility? special ability. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh God, <laughs> I can't move for shit. Well, no, no. If you if you look on the combat map section, each maneuver that you spend on movement lets you move five squares. Oh, okay, okay, sweet. So, so then I, I have a question. Then, um, if that's the case, then. What's what's the benefit of my talent that lets uh, this, lets the, me move with strength instead of agility? If you decided to haul ass away from the counter, mm -hmm. you had and and, and this, ideally in a combat situation, since this is a combat situation, basically that he failed his detection roll and mm -hmm. the monsters were spotted you before you spotted them. That's mm -hmm. what the result was. 
uh, you're technically considered engaged in combat. In order to get the hell out of combat and to safety, you have to make a move check to do that. Okay. So ideally, there's nothing saying you have to fight this shit. An ideal situation that you spot them first, you can just do your best to avoid them, be it stealth, or you can rush down and try to make a move roll or fucking run by them. Okay. But general rule of thumb for most moves in a combat situation, when you flee, you flee back the way you came. You don't, like, flee further into the zone or to another area. Oh boy, I think uh, I think I had the double move to get in. So, <laughs> oh shit. Let's see. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah. Machete in hand, and thinking to himself, "What the fuck am I doing?" Um. Double move in. What? Trying to let Mask get in first so that the creature looks at Mask instead. <laughs> that one giant reptile that got two successes spent one to boost his initiative, basically getting all riled up and hungry. Like, ah, dinner's on. So he's like more agile. Hey, um, Ian, can I spend my mutation to give myself plus five initiative right now? Activate. Um, activating the mutation is um, it's an action. Yeah, it's an action. Never mind. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. So the giant reptile being a hungry, greedy thing, just spit on somebody and then suddenly realizes two morsels have come to engage it. Uh, it'll do pretty much exactly what I thought it might do. On to who? Uh, Chet, you were the first one to engage it. Do you want high or low? Hi. Fuck. Sorry, mate. Clanker, this is... You read your combat options about defense. Close combat. This is a new round. And the critter is deciding to act. It basically just like cocks its head down towards you and tries to take a bite out of you in close combat. Since you haven't acted, you can try to defend yourself if you wish to. You forfeit your attack this round, but you get to do an opposed combat roll with them. So for any successes you generate, you can negate their damage, or you can even, if you have enough and you choose to do a stun, you can counterattack them. Okay, it's better than getting banged on, so uh, yeah, yeah. let's let's do it. Right. Spitter Beast One. So we go. Your fight stat. Fuck off, cunt. <laughs> Oh my god, okay. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty much a stalemate. Yeah, he's, he, he hit successfully, he would spend the success to boost his damage up to three. Uh, you can spend your two to reduce the damage down to one, if you wanted to. Or you could... Spend one to reduce it down to two and counterattack immediately inflicting your machete's damage upon it. Or you could technically boost your initiative and counterattack it. It's, it's, it's any kind. For e- each one you get, you choose a success. For each success, you choose one of the stunts on the defense section of close combat. Well, I'm of the opinion that you gotta take damage to give it, so I'm gonna go ahead and just give him back his two that he gave me two, two to two. Let's so banged on. So you'll you see you have two successes. You can choose to eliminate one of his successes. Yeah, two for two is what you said. So yeah. I was just detailing it. 
All right, so this is physical damage. So on your attributes, on strength, there'll be a clicky on the left-hand side where it says five out, of, or I don't know, in my case, it says something out of something. Click the leftmost down two notches, and that will adjust your macros accordingly. And it should register as two damage on the right-hand side when you do it. So given that, he chomps down to bite you and you launch a counterattack, if you wish to describe that. Yeah, he, he bites me across the arm or shoulder or something and rips me up. Ah, you fucker! And then just pull my arm away, blood kind of spilling on the ground or water or what have you. I rear back and swing my machete across its belly. All right. Takes its damage. <laughs> Then cuts to Sakran. Sakran's like, ah, you f mother loving dumb oaf son of a bitch. <laughs> That's right, mask ran away from me. Uh, fuck. Uh, fuck, fuck, fuck. And then he shoots. He's like, fuck, I need the bullets. Fuck. So you're just gonna stay back there cursing? No, and I shoot. Uh, uh, at the... Oh, that's right, your Derringer does have short range. Yeah. Pulls out that little holdout. Oh my god, you got two? <laughs> <laughs> you have been banged on. You sure you don't have four eyes? <laughs> Outrageous. Or well, with the glasses, I guess. Um, yeah, I popped up the range combat. Um, he has first... a Derringer in each hand. <laughs> <laughs> your 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 first success does its weapon damage and for the additional success you can choose one of the stunts there which is to boost the damage down pen them down increase your initiative make them drop a weapon if he has one or push them back it's kind of a given pretty much just pumping into damage yeah i'm gonna just pump it into damage uh what's the damage on your derringer is it was it one uh hold on Damage. Uh, one. Yeah, I bet you didn't add a gear bonus either off of... Oh, there's a gear bonus. No. You didn't add a, a bonus? No. no, I did not. Okay, if you want to, go ahead and click your base dice. Okay, and one dice? Yeah, that or the mod dice. It don't matter. Yeah, just one die. No. Okay, yeah, that's not this. Oh, that's an equipment die. An equipment die one is... Oh, wait, that's only if you push it. That's only if you push the roll. It would be damaged. So you're cool. Okay, so you pop it down for two points. Somehow, as you shoot through the fog, you manage to pop a shot. You're the creature once again. I want that bullet back, you son of a motherfucking bitch mother. <laughs> He's speaking in tongues, mate. Then cuts to Boz, who is pretty sizzled and melting by now. Uh, he immediately withdraws back. Spends his action reloading because each scrap gun only fires one shot. It's one of those mechanical handmade things. Unless you have multiple barrels or an artifact that has a magazine, basically, it's you gotta spend. Was it, is it a maneuver to reload? It appears to be so. Yeah, so he's doing two maneuvers. He's, he's, he's going back and then loading a shell. Uh, it is now Fig Jam's turn. And Fig Jam points at the reptile. He goes, damn it, heal it. And damn it, bolts off over here. Just telling the dog to run over there. Yeah, next 
next round he'll okay. run in and bite yeah. it on the heel. Okay, that's cool, that's cool. And the big lumbering Goliath mask. He just takes his scrap axe with two hands and just overhead chopping motion towards the back of the lizard. Um, sorry, roll fight, is that correct? Yeah, it's fight. Um, check your maneuvers, see if there's anything you're able to do with a maneuver first. Um, uh, not, not really anything, honestly. Maneuvers, yeah. Use an item, reload a gun, aim, yeah. range step. Mm -hmm. Boom. And then I get one gear bonus to that, I believe. Yes, yeah, scrap axe is a one gear bonus. You have one success and then one stun, which you can pump the damage by one point. Um, holy dog shit. Yeah, I think... Uh, um, yeah, that's what I'll do. Just pump the damage. Right. It's three plus one. You do four damage. It doesn't have any armor. That will break it if you wish to. Please roll on the critical injury chart. That's okay. the mat. You can just left click the macro. And... I don't think I can see them anymore. I think they're out of range for me. Here, I'll move it over to you. There you go. Public? Yeah, if you wish. <laughs> oh shit! Uh, trying to see if that's a no. It is not a lethal. If you ever get a lethal result on your wound, oh, the severed spine is no damaged spine is not. If you ever get a, that means you're gonna die it and around unless somebody. Hmm. So it's a, but you did break it. Is it? Um, resounding. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? <sighs> you can describe as you how you break this thing, given your result. Yeah, he just swings down, um, kind of stepping to the right and kind of trying to flank it with clanker and swings the scrap axe towards the lower half of this giant lizard thing. And the axe just goes right through both of the back of his um, quote-unquote feet, cutting the Achilles tendon on both as it squeals and crashes to the ground. Yeah, it immediately flips over, blood sprewing all over the place. Just... And the two of them are broken, can... By all means, you can coup de grave either one of them. They're efficiently taken out of combat, so. Oh yeah, as soon as it goes down, I'm I'm kill stealing. I'm assuming Mask and I are just going ham on this thing while it's still writhing around. But I come in and I start sticking it. You big cunt! Just keep sticking him with the machete. Are you all right? Looking at Clanker. No, mate. He bit half my fucking arm off. Will you be able to fix things still? Yeah, probably. I need someone to fix me fucking arm. That's why I stick the lizard one more time in the eye. Fucking cocksucker. Where's my I don't fucking know bullet? You... Where's my fucking bullet? Want... <laughs> 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 I'm just going to dig it out of the way. I don't know if you want me to try and heal you or not, Glunker. Yeah, pack some dirt. <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah, but the way um, non-critical injury healing is, is you get at least four hours rest, and then for each point of uh, appropriate item that you ingest, you heal back that type of damage. In this case, since it's physical damage, four hours sleep, and then for each ration you eat, well... Recuperate your damage. Do you think we can eat this tongue? And he kind yeah. of stands on it and kind of pulls the tongue away from the 
back of the throat and just hacks it with his axe until it comes free. Yeah, like almost out of reflex memory. Friggin' uh, Boz is over there just cussing. He loads his gun, brings it up to bear, and then he squints to the distance and he hears the sounds of y'all talking and like, it's okay. And he's just, fuck it, shit, fuck it. He's like, looks at Sacker and he's just grimacing. He could, Sacker, and you can see that his whole front chest and arms are all, all starting to look goopy and shit as he's trying to wipe the ass and spit off of him. Boz, mate, are you gonna fucking live? We need you to get back. It's just like, ah, it's fucking burns, it burns! Are we, are we in water or under? Are we near the water, mate? Oh, yeah, y'all can hear the water. Okay. You're currently around a building right now. Fucking boss, follow me. Jump in the water yourself. Stop the burning. Come up and try to start using something to help pat him down and get the acid off of him so he's not fucked. <laughs> yeah, as y'all start making your way around, you start hearing your footsteps clump upon wood and realize it's some kind of boardwalk, some dock and stuff like that, but y'all can eventually find your way from the to the docks and you find like a ladder leading down off the side of one of the docks. You're in the water stack, by the way. Oh. Okay. Uh, <laughs> that's like a ledge right there. It's like an overlook. Oh, okay. But actually, on the plus side with four arms, he's an amazing swimmer. <laughs> Where are you guys? There we go. Uh, so much better. Pause. Fucking. Mask. Get here. Shackens is going to walk up to Boz and, and just try and shove him into the water. Get in there, you fool. Oh, God. And Boz, he's like, goes down, washes his arm, and it's like, immediately starts complaining. Like, it's fucking cold! It's fucking cold! Give me a... It burns! It's cold! It burns! It's cold! <laughs> Which God is it? it? Does it burn or is it cold? Uh, he's ultimately... Not Well, are you awake yet? Next time, keep your fucking eyes open. You're supposed to be a stalker. You're, you're, you're a piece of shit. <laughs> Made me lose a fucking bullet. On a fucking... A toad. Fuck you, Boz. You owe me a bullet. You God, owe him a you, bullet. Boy, he lost me fucking arm. You Jesus. owe him an arm. <laughs> yeah, just got to go away. We did what we were supposed to do here. See if these things have anything in their nests. They fucking nests. We're gonna go in a fucking nest. The bloody things have a nest. I don't know. Just look in the buildings and tell me if you find anything. Oh, what the fuck? Ah, <laughs> oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. Fuck. He immediately, he immediately like started as the, the fog over time slowly starts to dissipate. You'll hear him outside eventually, just like going. <laughs> And he's like over at some building that used to be like an admission or concession stand of some kind. He's like hunkered over the, the counter of it, like lunged down and stuff. And he's like, ah, this is I saw it. And he like drawing Excalibur from the stone, he pulls something up in his hands. And for us at the table, it's a fucking umbrella, but to him, it's like the, the holy grail. He's like, I found this. <laughs> What is that? He kind of looks at it and then looks at you and then looks at it again and he goes, I don't know, but it looks important. Does he open it? Uh, he doesn't even technically know how. Nice. Mask like reaches and tries to take it out of his hand. He hesitates, but then this is wounded arm kind of keeps him from trying to do anything else. He's like, well, don't break it, don't break it, you big elf! And, like, Mask kind of, like, drops his axe for a second, and he, like, starts swinging the umbrella around like a big <laughs> club, and he's like, oh, I don't think this would hurt anything. And no, wait, kinda... let me, let me fucking see it. He, he, come on. And he's just, like, looking yeah. disappointed. As, you're, as you're going to grab it, and he's swinging it around, and then he unfurls, and this goes <laughs> down to a big mushroom. 
Oh, oh mass, God. mass, let's go immediately. What is this <laughs> magic? Back and damn it, barks his head off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a magical stick. What the fuck? What the fuck is that, Clanker? Is it the shiny? We can Sounds give it to Finn. Because y'all are investigating an item further and examining, you know, this boss starts slinking off, tromping on the wood. Oi, boss. Where you off to? Looking for more stuff. Like you should be. Ah, fuck. Don't get too far from me, Sacred. Let's hold hands again. <laughs> Can I... Are you, gonna, are you gonna try to comprehend what it is? Yeah, I was gonna try to comprehend and understand how this works. Uh, Sacred's gonna try and look for more shiny things. Is it a scout? Uh, you playing around with it, um, uh, Clanker, you, like, initially hold it upside down and stuff like that, and you're like, well, what the hell is this, you know, is it, like, it resist air, you know, you try to run with it a little bit to see if it would slow you down from a fall, maybe, <laughs> jump off the roof. <laughs> <laughs> Mary Poppins. Fuck. Yeah, and, uh, and ultimately, you know, as you're twirling about, you just rest it across the top of your shoulder, and you notice that it covers your head pretty good and it dawns upon you that there has been known to be acid rain in the zone more often than not and you kind of get the notion that you know shutting it and opening it shutting it and opening it looking at it holding it over your head that you could probably keep the rain off the top of your head and congratulations you found an artifact you found an umbrella Oh, yeah. I'm gonna hold on to this. Uh, to find shinies, is that a scout? Uh, well, it's... Technically, it's it's part of the find the path role that the um, stalker makes. Oh, yeah. okay. So that is the yeah, shiny. but, but he, he got it, and since he's a scout, he got it, he got... He got two hazard signs. Which means that there are artifacts. Oh wait, he didn't. He failed, didn't he? There's two artifacts. No, it's cool. It's cool. I'm, I'm cool with it. But uh, yeah, as you're going around, you you found an artifact. You found yourself an umbrella. You quickly notice the sounds of Boz again going. Ah! You can hear it immediately a splash into the water. Where is he going, Sacred? You can see, I don't know. like I said, the, th the, <clears throat> the, the fog is dissipating, but you can see his silhouette off the dock. He just like starts jumping up and down like an old prospector. He ultimately just pinches his nose, grabs his crotch, and jumps into the water. He keeps saying the thing is cold, and he continues to jump in it. Yeah, this is the first thing after he jumps off. You can hear as he's submerging up. He just goes, Fah! But he's quickly clamoring on this on this something that's floating, bobbing in the water. Looking down, it kind of looks like a piece of wood floating, but it's an odd-shaped piece of wood. It's kind of like a almond shape, almost like an eye, and it has, like, the inside of it's kind of hollow, and it's got, like, planks of wood across it. Like, you know, somebody could sit in it. And he's like quickly clambers up into it and he's like breathing real heavy. He's like, <laughs> Oh, it floats! Look, it floats! And he's like rocking back and forth to this thing. Uh, Sakin will try and jump into that. I'm gonna jump straight into it? Yeah. Oh, shit. How far is it? Like, it's. Oh, wait, bef before you do, Mass, like, reaches and grabs a hold of you and wait and he takes the rope and his rope and ties it around your waist mask you continue to dumbfound me 
takes a rope and starts climbing down onto okay. whatever this oval shaped thing with jiggles all right lowers you down he clambers down and the first step you take is pretty solid even though it's bobbing across the top of the water the second step it's a good thing he has a rope on you because the second step you immediately lose your footing stumble forward because you're basically stepping on something that slides and switches out from beneath your foot and looking down it's like a piece of wood that's been carved it's like real long and spindly on one end but then it elongates out to like this big flat you know you all know what a paddle is you know mm -hmm, spanking mm -hmm. paddle but yeah it's basically like that and then as you realize and you've managed to use the rope and catch your balance you realize your foot's kind of wedged in between two of them oi glanka what mate and it's what the fuck is this looks like two sticks oh, let me look at it mate hold on fucking here we go what is this? You can teach one person about it. Mm. Uh, congratulations, my friend. You have just found yourself a canoe. Oh. It's wooden interior, and the outside appears to be an aluminum casing of kind badly dented and stuff but it has two seats and two paddles tucked away underneath the seating kind of look at you know boss fucking around um in it and kind of get a sense that this could move you through the water with all with that traction motion so again hmm yeah, you can uh you can move through water easier not fucking drown that's what it is. What? Walk on water? No, no, no not fucking walk on water, mate. You, you, you sit in there, right? Like like he's doing. And you use those two fucking sticks. And when you're in the water, it makes it easier than if you use your arms. You don't have to get tired and shit. It's, you, you just move through the water with that thing. It's easier. So I sit on the water and I move through the water by using sticks. You sit in that thing, and then you use the fucking sticks to move it. Ah, fuck. It's too complicated. I'll, I'll fucking... I'll, we'll, we'll figure it out. We'll, we'll, we'll work on it. We'll work on it. I where do we hide this shit? Ah, uh, fucking nowhere. We bring it back. I can carry it. Yeah, he can carry it. I can carry this. Wait, umbrella. Ah, okay. This is going to be fucking big news for uh, Marco. I'll tell you what. Should we give this to Finn? He's nods to the canoe. Fuck no, I'll give you this. Pointly umbrella. Or we'll give a... Uh, cut off a fucking lizard's tail or something. I don't know. Give it I got a nice. tongue. Please. <laughs> He's got the lizard's tongue like hanging off his rope belt. Right, give her the tongue. Yeah, the tongue or some fucking teeth if you feel like pulling those fuckers out. Let's see, how long is our tongue if you cut it out of our mouths? It's about eight inches. It's oh, like you could probably good, wear that thing as a dress. It's like a good... Uh, it's a lizard, too, so they have elongated tongues if you really start. It's probably about a two and a half foot, three foot long tongue. <laughs> that could be... That could be <laughs> Friday night lingerie. <laughs> 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 Is that a tongue? Are you happy to see me? Yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you what. what I'll, I'll whip something up for her so we can keep this shit. Hold on. I mean, look, he was thinking about giving the umbrella to someone, but knowing that he'll never get it back, um, he'll keep it shouldered. And I actually want to try to collect some teeth out of one of these fucking lizard mouths and make her a little necklace with a. Uh, I'll jury rig it if I can do that. But messing about, yeah, you're extracting teeth and stuff like that. It's a simple matter of finding something you could wrap around the teeth. Simple carving with a knife of some kind you could put a groove, and if you find some twine or 
vine or even somebody's long hair. Freaking make a braided part for the necklace. This mask have long hair. <laughs> yeah, what? it's like it's a uh, shorter length. Mm. Shit. Shorter length, yeah. Mm -hmm. so, you also. see, you see it basically. Uh, parts of it poking underneath his mask, because the the back of it isn't exposed, right? Because his whole head is like covered in a sack. Boy, mask. Mm hmm. You want to give something nice to uh, Finna, yeah? Why, sure. Okay, hold still and don't fucking punch me. Mm. And I'm gonna try to get some hair <laughs> I need a few I need some of your hairs for something. Don't fucking hit me. Mm, okay. I'll try to shear shear off a bit with my machete or just fucking yank one that seems long enough. Make her a bracelet. Oi! That hurt. Yeah, take a considerable amount of hair. It's a nice size little circular size scalping job you do. <laughs> and yeah, yeah, cutting hair with a machete will definitely fucking hurt. It but yeah, you could take them and start braiding the hairs around and stuff like that. In the bracelet. Just make sure you tell her that's my hair. I will. I will. I'll make you. I'll make you something nice for it, mate. Cheers. No. You want me to jury rig it? Or... And, uh, as y'all basically con continue to explore this area itself, y'all make some other auxiliary finding. It's just like scrap. Uh, most definitely up north. Looks like an old picnic area. Looks like the beginnings of a nest of some kind. The creature gun to make uh, intermingled uh, debris, like friggin' torn tarps, limbs, twigs, what old half a tire and stuff like that. Stuff that was basically been chewed up and then woven into part of a nest. You managed to find. Um, the dented remains of a saxophone was in decent condition. So that'll go on your scrap. <laughs> well, that's, 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 that's basically scrap, yeah. yeah uh, I'm done with it. Um, you find, uh, Mask is really happy. One thing he finds, it's, looks, you hold it in your hand and you're pretty much like, was almost, it's, it's it feels lightweight, but it's got a solid feel to it. It's basically an old plastic toilet brush. It's in worn but usable condition. Yeah, he um, he basically he's, oh, I can use this right here, and he uh, kind of pulls his mask forward and starts brushing the back of his hair with it. Careful not to hit Back the scratcher. Spot. Yeah, just careful not to hit the spot that's just been scalped. Yeah. Yeah, he's and trying to like cover it up, like comb over the other hair, even though it can't be seen through his mask anyway. And Fig Jam, you notice that uh, Dammit's paused long enough to hike a leg and start peeing on something. Basically, like stop that, get over here, and in the process, you realize what he's pissing on appears to be. Um, an old empty hot dog cart it's in worn condition and starting to rust up but the wheels are still on it and it be you know movable usable well Fig Jam will try rolling it around some and if it rolls easily enough it, hey hey mates well, we can put things on this and roll them back to the ark. Yeah, it's it's, it's rickety, you know, kind of like the bad cart in the grocery store, but the wheels don't fall off. It takes a little bit of momentum to get them going, but once you do, they continue to roll. 
little squeaky here and there. Is this a chariot? Yeah, it's it's it, it's got the uh, top access, you know, like the loose panels you can lift up and reach down into it. It's got like a nice nice size container area inside of it. Saker, you want to ride? Let's ride. <laughs> <laughs> Clamber on the top of it. Yeah, Saturn's gonna climb on, clamber on the top. Oh, of you, it. you fuckers are gonna break our shit. What are you doing, mate? Mass just starts running around in a circle, like as fast as he can with Sacred on the top. Oh my god! <laughs> running around with a forearm mutant. Probably grinding ear to ear on the top of an old rickety hot dog cart. <laughs> <laughs> meanwhile, the meanwhile the urge to start playing the saxophone starts to fill Clanker's recesses of his mind. <laughs> hey, boss, are these things edible? What things? Mm. Shake Jim points at the big reptiles. A bit of east. He just yeah. kind of like going. He says, uh, "For me, perhaps. I don't know about you, delicate stomach types." <laughs> Winces his arms, aggravate. Yeah, uh, mask is like, "Well, I've got a big steak here," and he points uh, to the tongue. That meat's no good to you. Uh, that's tainted. The. Uh. Yeah, right. He just takes it and throws it. Yuck. Nothing. Well, we should get this back, shouldn't we? I mean, we're supposed to spend the day in a zone, but how I fuck it all? Yeah, it's. Up to you now. I did what the big boss wanted. Mass shrugs and let it sake them. That being said, and looking at the time now, if you wish to, yeah, you make your decision to head back and continue on from there. Yeah, we'd want to drop this shit off, and then if we want to go again, we can. Yeah, I'm good with that. Yep, I'm good with that as well. But you have explored one zone. Wish it was all three that I want. But it's cool. Uh, so I'm assuming was the Saccharin going to make Mass ride him back all the way to the <laughs> Yes. <laughs> oh yeah, Mass would be happy to do that. Uh, well, who's going to carry the canoe? Oh, shit. Yep. I'll just do uh, that in the other hand. No, I'm just kidding. We'll, 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 make, we'll make Mask and Sacrin stop their fucking breakage of the cart. You could turduck and... it. You could turduck and, <laughs> and put the canoe on the cart and yeah, that's... Sacrin in the canoe. Yeah, there you go. Oh, God. <laughs> And he gets to be playing with the paddles. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Ear test to see if everything breaks. <laughs> that's, that's kind of what. That's exactly what's gonna happen. So, so Saturn will get down the cart. Okay, enough of horse playing, Mask. This is what we're gonna do. Put that canoe or whatever the hell that is on this thing, <laughs> and then I'm gonna use the rope to tie the canoe or whatever the hell that thing is to this whatever this thing is with the wheels, and then I'm gonna get in on it, and you're gonna push. And I'm going to explain to you, step by step, how we are going to become the biggest pig farmers in all of Halo. Hmm. And then we do my plan. Then we do your plan. We're going to be the biggest shit shoveling, piss taking, fucking pig farmers in all of Halo. Hmm. You know when they when they say the word pigs, they're going to they're going to think of the word saccharin and musk. 
And he goes and he just throws the canoe on top of the hot dog cart and begins to tie it down and says, Your chariot. Thank you. And then he kind of jumps on there with the two uh, oars and he starts kind of like very oddly trying to figure out how to actually row over land on a cart. You put them in the ground, (laughs) dummy. And he just starts pushing them. notations of the area and actually look and see him look down and he's flipping through some dirty grimy book of his making jots and notations basically what he's explored and a little diorama paths they took to get here and stuff like that basically justifying why it's easier to go to an area that you explored and I'll start making your way back away from the marina Fog's finally dissipated by the time y'all get about halfway across back to the zone. I guess we will close the scene here due to time, just simply with y'all returning back to the gates of the Ark. With the mighty forearm Sokran riding atop of a very unusual <laughs> cart. And, <laughs> and then as, as we approach the, the gates of Halo, in one arm each, I have the oars kind of outstretched, and then, you know, the other two arms raised in kind of like a, you know, I think, I think we can all agree that even though we are at M, at year zero and all this bad shit has happened, the 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 symbols of the horns outstretched from your hands would have survived the apocalypse. <laughs> so that's how Devil we're riding horns. in. Yeah, devil horns. Two yeah, hands, yeah. devil horns. The other two hands with oars in, in each of them. <laughs> we arrive at the gates of Halo. <laughs> well, the scene will finally fade to black with a small contingent of Yaka's guards looking utterly confused and bewildered. As they notice the squeaking sounds, wheels being rolled accompanied by your entourage of mutant misfits that will be yes. that will be session zero ground zero yes we survived